clicking it live with the squeaky flow. D Wood and AP TikTok time to rock. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all over the world. It's your friendly neighborhood philosopher here, D Wood. With me now is the apostate prophet. How you doing, AP? Good, good, good. Why is it always neighborhood? Like what's what's it with the neighborhood? Why can't you just be the friendly philosopher? Why does it have to be the, the neighborhood for friendly neighborhood philosopher? Because I stick to my own neighborhood which is the entire world. Oh, snap. Oh, you got to rep the, the, the neighborhood. Okay, All the world's a neighborhood, AP. I see, yeah. Hey. Okay. Yeah. Have you heard of this Fareed guy? I don't know what that is. Is that the guy who talks like, oh, today I have something very interesting to say to you. I am going to demonstrate to you why these Islamophobes are lying. You mean that guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still, okay, to this okay. day, do not know if he has some accent or <laughs> or if he just speaks in an extremely condescending tone. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yes. All right. So how did, how did we get here? Oh, so the other day, what was this? Monday or Tuesday or something like that, I posted a video. Probably my second favorite argument against Islam, namely that if you go through the Quran, you really get the, the strong impression that the Quran is revealed to Arabs because they need a revelation in their own language. Mm -hmm. You get that impression. You get the impression that Muhammad is sent to all people in the sense that all people are supposed to recognize all of uh, God's messengers and so on. But the one you actually follow, the one you actually obey, the scriptures you go to are the scriptures that were revealed to your people in your language. And the, the sort of takeaway is that this is the opposite of what Muslims say. The position of the Quran, as far as I can tell, is the Quran was revealed in Arabic because Arabs needed a revelation in their own language. Because they couldn't, otherwise they would just have to trust what other people are saying about, uh, about uh, revelations in other languages. But if you can't examine it yourself, you just have to take someone's word for it. And if you have to take someone's word for it, how do you know whose word to take? How do you know to listen to this Christian who's saying this or that Christian who's saying that? How do you know to, to listen to this Jew who's saying this or that Jew who's saying that? How do you know? You don't. So you would you need a revelation in your own language to be the standard. That's what the Quran is saying. But notice, that's the exact opposite of what Muslims say to, to us today, because they say everyone has to go to the Quran as their only source of revelation, even if you don't speak the language. And so the question becomes, OK, who do we listen to? Do we listen to this guy who says the Quran is a joke? Do we listen to that guy who says the Quran is great? Do we listen to this uh, jihadi who says that uh, we need to read it and, and slaughter unbelievers in the name of Allah? Do we listen to this nice, peaceful Ismaili Shia? Who do we listen to here? Who do we listen to? We don't know if we, according to the Quran, we don't know because we don't have a book in our own language. And the Quran sets this up as a problem. The Quran is supposed to solve this problem by giving the revelation to Arabs in their language and Muslims turn it into... A much bigger problem by saying now everyone has to go with this book in a language they don't understand. Have you ever gotten that impression from the Quran, AP? Absolutely. And I also made a video a long time ago, which was about how the Quran, how Islam is a religion for for Arabs, basically, or um, which doesn't mean, you know, it's it's an Arab thing, you know, don't follow it. It means it is meant to be for Arabs. That's what it's what it looks like. And um, but the interesting thing is I completely addressed that topic from a different angle, uh, not from the one that you addressed it from i didn't even i didn't even um you know i didn't even look at it from that perspective so this is a this is an interesting uh perspective to look at um but yeah so it is definitely an interesting thing obviously it didn't work out the whole goal of uh sending a book to the people who didn't have a book yet in their own language and enlightening them obviously it, it didn't work out we have different uh understandings different factions within this religion it didn't solve the problem the people today who convert to islam who are alive today some of them are quran only fans some of them are um other people it just doesn't work yeah so yeah I'm wondering if Quran only fans. <laughs> I'm wondering if Quran only fans is still going to be funny, like a year from now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know why you're laughing. I wasn't joking. I was just saying. I'm Quran just. Only. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
like some stuff is just funny every day, no matter how many times I hear it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've mentioned before, I've mentioned before in prison every day, multiple times per day, when the guards would show up for count time, when they, we all have to stand by our bunk and they go around and count us. Every day the guards would show up, at, I mean, multiple times per day, the guards would show up, they yell count time and someone would yell, count these nuts. And every day it was funny to me for years, year after year after year. That was still that was still hilarious to me that someone is telling the guard to uh, count these nuts. Anyway, that's good. That's good. Yeah. All right. So anyway, here's the uh, here's the plan, ladies and gentlemen. Um, when someone posts a response video, we normally don't want to go through the uh, the entire original video. But there's this ongoing problem with Farid AP. There's this ongoing problem with Farid where. He'll respond to a video, respond to a, a pretty insignificant part of the video in, tar in terms of like the main argument of the video. But then he'll put he'll he'll show it to his fans who haven't watched the full video and say, look, I've refuted this entire video, even though he's missed the point of the entire video. Have, have you have you experienced that from Farid? It's it, it's funny that you say that because uh, you know that in the past, Farid made like 50 something videos about me in uh, to refute all the videos that I that I put out um, half the videos were that it was like um he supposedly refutes my video he responds to it but um he completely misses the point or he picks out only one single tiny little aspect of the video and then responds to it and then my then the issue that i have when i analyze it and when i um and when i want to respond to it is which is by the way also why i'd never uh, why i eventually didn't do a complete uh, response to him the problem is uh, when he does that, what I then am confronted with is, wow, he completely missed the, the point of the video or he misrepresented it. I would now have to first explain the actual content of my video to everyone and then go to his response and analyze that. And if I just make a video about this, this will just, and if I make this with every single response that he made, because he did that over and over again in so many cases, then... This will take too much of my time and it will be too tiresome for me. I don't think I'm going to do that. And the thing is, because of that, to be honest, I'm thinking like, is, is this guy just incapable of understanding the point of a video or is he doing this on purpose so that uh, because because, you know, it's, it could be a tactic because it obviously works. It obviously made me think, you know what, I'm not going to bother. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and. Yeah, I, I wonder that as well. And then you wonder, how do you proceed? Because as you pointed out, wait a minute, for every video I make that someone responds to and they don't really get the point and they don't really address it, but you wonder, okay, now their fans are just watching them. Their fans aren't watching the original. Exactly. And so they're not getting the point. They don't even understand the original point. So do I actually respond and say, no, 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 he didn't get the point. But then you have to do that for every video because they, they missed the point of every video. And so what, for every video, then I have to make a follow-up video saying they didn't get the point and let me explain this. But then they'd respond to that video. They'd miss the point of that video. And it's like, it's like this, uh, this, I don't know, I don't know what to do. It's like, becomes like this infinite task of saying, here's a simple point. Can you get this simple point? And it becomes this, this just ongoing thing. Um, In fact, you know what happened? Um, I, I, I told him I would make a, re a response to his videos. I made my first response, which was about the, the sun setting in a muddy spring or something like that. Um, and in that video, I pointed out that he completely misunderstands and misrepresents what was being said. Uh, and then I continued with the, ref with the refutation of his refutation. He then made a response to it just about that single point again, which I said he misunderstood. And then I had to make a response to that again. And then I thought to myself, you know, what the, what in the world am I doing? <laughs> so yeah. I stopped. Yeah, it gets to a point. It gets to a point because you're thinking you're thinking about like their fans, right? Their fans yeah. are watching this and their fans aren't going to understand your point. Yeah, but then yeah. at the same time, you start to think, look, if your fans are dumb enough to think that you've refuted my point, like, why am I going to try to explain things? Like, how would I explain things to them if they're that exactly. dumb? It's a, exactly. it's a weird situation. Anyway, so I only watched Fareed's videos like nine or 10 minutes or something like that. I only watched like the first two to three minutes of the video. Here's what's funny. When I was making my original video and at the beginning, I quote Garrett Poulin and uh, Ali Dashti, and I start thinking, when Muslims respond, they're just going to respond to this point when this is not the point. This is not the point at all. This is to 
introduce and set up the actual point. But I'm sitting there thinking they're just going to go after this because this is insulting the Quran. They're just going to focus on that and claim that they've destroyed me and then Farid. I started watching it. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't finish watching his video. I watched like, again, like the first two to three minutes. And that was instantly what he was going after. And I was like, gosh. So I don't know if he gets to any other points in the video or if he just continues going after that. But we're actually going to find this out. Anyway, I pointed out that we I wouldn't ordinarily. That's, want that's, the, that's the funny thing, right? Uh, you think when you when you prepare something, you think, you know, there are really going to be people who will just be stuck on that point, which would be stupid. Yep. And then they do exactly that. So, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just based on years of experience, years of <laughs> years of doing this over and over again. And every single time it's, oh, they missed the point and they respond to the wrong thing. Uh, you start realizing you start being able to get this extra sense of, oh, this is what they're going to focus on. And that's yeah. it. That's their that's that's their takeaway, even though that's like a million miles away from the real point of the uh, yeah. of the video. So anyway, uh, again, I. I normally wouldn't want to go through an entire original video to go to the response video, but this time I do one, because I think it is a massively under, uh, under, uh, underrepresented argument. This argument should be used constantly and you don't see it used constantly. Again, this is probably my fate, my second favorite argument against Islam, the Islamic dilemma, you know, the Quran affirms, the Jewish and Christian scriptures, which contradict the Quran. So the Quran self-destructs. That's probably my favorite argument. Um, I can have a favorite. I can have a, an argument I like better in certain uh, scenarios. Uh, but as far as just general all-purpose argument, I love that the best. But my second favorite argument is probably the one we're going with right now and no one knows about it. So uh, that's one. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and go through my original video so that everyone, in case anyone who hasn't watched it, um, they can, uh, they can see it. Anyone who has watched it will be, I'll be watching it with AP. So we'll, we'll add a little bit of commentary here and there. We'll be watching. And we'll so, be. yeah, so I want everyone to really understand the argument, but two, I want to do that before watching the Fareed video so that people can see how ridiculously he misses the point. He just completely misses the point. Hey, you know, what's funny about this? Um, uh, right after I posted it, right after I posted it, uh, Farid posted a comment and he's like, uh, hey, David, oh, this is so dumb. Why don't you challenge me to respond to this? And I go, OK, respond to it. And then he posts his video and his videos. David Wood challenged me. to." <laughs> 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 it's funny, right? <laughs> Making it look like I tracked him down. Farid, I dare you to respond to this. I'm like, David, will you ask me to respond to this so I can tell my fans you challenged me? <laughs> You know what's pathetic? He he blocked me on uh, on on Twitter a long time ago, uh, because um, he was messaging me with, in a very friendly way and all, all that, which was which was quite cool. But then he blocked me after some point because he said he's uh, very tired of seeing people tweet about me all the time and he just doesn't want to see me anymore. Um, but but then every now and then he just tweets at me and about me while I'm blocked, which is just very strange. That is fun. Gotta love Fareed. Uh, and we, uh, we, we of course tease Fareed and stuff, but he's one of the guys that, uh, that we've said, we kind of, we kind of liked the guy. Um, if, you know, if we didn't, I miss, didn't... I miss him so much. Why did he block me? I miss you, Fareed, please. Yeah. <laughs> but he's one of the guys, one, we generally think he's more sincere than some of the other guys who are just narcissists. I agree. Uh, and he's one of the guys who seems like someone we would get along with if we didn't have, you know, Muhammad standing in the way. Uh, whereas like the other guys, like I, I can't imagine a scenario. Ali Dawa could become the, the greatest Christian in the world. I still would not <laughs> still couldn't like that dude or hijab. Uh, so anyway, um, but hijab, hijab himself told me, uh, that maybe in the future we could be a very good friends. And I was like, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but with, with Farid genuinely, um, the guy, I, I don't know. I, I feel like he is a guy that I would sit down and uh, and actually have good conversations with if we were not uh, these great opponents. Yeah. Um, but in this in this situation, it's just very strange. Yeah. So, guys. So, lots of times, especially when you're dealing with if you're criticizing Islam, you can't get along with certain Muslims because they don't. They're not going to like you. So, even though you may be happy to get along with them, they're not going to want to get along with you because you're criticizing uh, Islam. But there are also just personality issues where even if they, you didn't have that obstacle between you and even if you agreed on everything, you still would not get along with them because, uh, you know, certain people are just have personality issues that would make you not want to get along with them. But the second thing about Farid is 
I mean, we all have Fareed to thanks to thank for the infamous holes in the narrative interview. Oh yeah, Fareed is the one who you know we we had seen for a long time that uh, Sheikh Yasser Qadi has these two faces. On the one hand, he's telling people perfect preservation right down to the letter. His dad, Mazhar Qazi, was one of the people who popularized that nonsense in the world. And Fareed, I mean, uh, and and uh, and uh, Sheikh Yasser Qadi just rolled with it. But Fareed was, was one of the people who who noticed that uh, he has two faces. We noticed he has two faces because he would say one thing in you know for popular level people, uh, but he was saying something completely different when you went to videos of him how he's talking to what he called students of knowledge. There he would say, of course, there are different Qurans in different parts of the world, and no, there's not perfect presence. What are you talking about, right? Mm-hmm. So Fareed noticed this and calls him out and, and leaks his private messages where he's acknowledging that he doesn't think that Muslims actually can solve these difficulties about uh, different Qurans and so on. Fareed exposes him. Muhammad Hijab uh, thinks he can clear, th- clear things up because Muhammad Hijab thinks there, he, back then he thought there was an answer. These guys are going to explain how there's just one Quran. And he gets Yasser Qadi on there and Yasser Qadi just like a million times, please, my Begging you, Muhammad and Job, don't make me discuss this in public, please. We can't discuss this in public. It will destroy people's faith in Islam. Please don't make me talk about this. And Hijab, what are you talking about? Come on, we got to, we come on. We got to, you've got to explain it, explain it. And uh, just completely, absolutely wrecked an argument. But notice that that goes back to Fareed. Fareed did the work that we spent decades trying to do. Mm-hmm. But people wouldn't listen. People wouldn't listen to us when we say, "What are you talking about?" There's a look. These entire chapters of the Quran came up missing. Look at all these variants in the manuscripts. They don't listen to us. They listen to their Dawa guys. But then their Dawa guys had to admit it all. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Farid. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank so we're you. gonna we're gonna watch my uh, original video, then go to Farid's video and see how he misses the point. Let's. Uh, we don't want to get behind on super chats. So we'll go through a couple super chats real quick. Uh, hi, AP and D Wood. AstroTurf. So this goes back to yesterday when we were asking what AstroTurf means. Oh, AstroTurf means paid supporters. So when when you've got protesters, I guess it's saying fake. So you got grass, but the, you got some state. You got some stadiums that are uh, grass and some that are AstroTurf. So AstroTurf, I guess, fake. Do you believe that these pro-Palestinian protesters are AstroTurf or are they true believers? Why are there thousands protesting uh, pro-Jihad? Where are the pro-IDF? Um, yeah, I don't know if they're paid or not. I don't think you need to. Uh, young people are dumb enough and people have been conditioned and programmed enough to where if you tell them, uh, hey, there's the oppressors over there and there's the oppressed. Whose side are you on? We're on the side of the oppressed. Oh, OK, we'll come out and march at our rally. And it just becomes a cool thing to do. Uh, where, I don't know, it seems like everyone wants something to view so that they can view themselves as the good guys without doing a whole lot, right? Mm-hmm. Without actually going and solving any problems. And young people have just absorbed the idea, hey, if we just, ah, free, free Palestine, free, free Palestine, then we're the good guys standing up for the oppressor. And we don't really have to do anything. Uh, and that makes us the good guys. So that's how it works i i don't believe that there is that there are massive efforts of paying people i think um it is currently uh the popular thing to do uh, which is very ir- ironic because uh, lots of people who who talked about um you know following the current thing are now um are now supporting the pro-palestine movement as well which yeah. is very strange mm-hmm. uh so <laughs> but th- th- there is that going on lots of people obviously we have just found out i mean it, 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 we, we just read that article on the wall street journal which was uh which showed that most people who most students in the west support the whole um from the river to the sea slogan but once they are told what it actually means and once they look at the map most of them change their opinion and mm-hmm. say they don't support it any longer which is just which is insane i mean these are these are supposed to be students, right? Yeah. Advanced students. So it just shows that lots of people are completely ignorant of what they're supporting. Yeah, and so they're not they're obviously not being paid to do it. Yeah, yeah. It's just they think yeah. they think they're doing the right thing and then they found out, "Oh, I don't know what the heck I'm talking about." Yeah, yeah. There was a what's funny is there was an attempt to imply that Israel was paying people to go to that one major uh, Israel rally um, in Washington, D.C., um, because they they picked out a thing where a Jewish organization um, tells students that if they want to go to the event, uh, they will receive 
a certain amount of money to compensate for their, uh, you know, for that for their travel costs and mm -hmm. all of that for, for their trouble. Um, people then took that out of context and started spreading this whole idea that Israel is paying people to go and mm -hmm. protest in, the, in their name because nobody mm -hmm. wants to do it. Okay. But it's 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 funny that uh, people always have to go go there in their yeah. minds. But I, I don't think that. There's a lot of payments going on. Yeah, I don't think so either. Uh, Michelle here. Oh, we're back to the poems. There once was a guy called Fareed who said he believes in Tawheed. Some say he is thick as he has little thick and Aisha was nine is agreed. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I hadn't thought about how well Fareed rhymes with Tawheed. So that could probably come up multiple times. Uh, hmm. Muhammad. Oh, wait. Is this a poem? Muhammad was a nice guy. They said it for my lifetime, but my leather straps can see that it's crap. The fruit that proves the lie. How did this become a thing on our channel where everyone just, or on our channels think, where everyone just posts poems all the time? I think Chloe started it. She started this. She started now everyone's doing it. Poems, and now everyone's doing it. Yeah. That's funny. That's <laughs> funny. Uh, Trunk Vax, I've come to pay the jizya. Yeah, we take all the jizya, but only in shekels. Uh, AP, were you able to contact the gentleman? You keep getting asked this, but uh, you can update us. She was nine years old. That would be that would be the per the perfect move. In, in all, <laughs> the perfect. In all honesty, um, if the person who said they sent me the information could send me that one more time, because I think it got mixed up among all my messages. If you could that, if you could do that again, they sent me like the message, but it was a link to like the guy's dojo or something, because the guy's a martial artist or something. That's what really? I got the link to. It was like, hey, look, yeah, we looked at what he was wearing and then and then found his his dojo or something like that. Ah, okay. Well, that works too. Maybe would have been funny yeah. if he like busted out with his uh, martial arts and took on the cops it was the perfect move it was the perfect move <laughs> oh any updates on hatun tosh yeah guys hatun is uh doing her thing she's not dead uh, lars here if aisha was nine and had fornication does she uh committing adultery or childrenery <laughs> Adult. That's a joke on <laughs> adultery or childrenery. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> uh, Shake my nuts. Shake my nuts says uh, the Quran gives us the best kush. This proves it's true. Hey, oh, Farid yeah. doesn't like it when we joke too much. He's, he watches and he's like, look, look at this. Look at this. He this doesn't understand the jokes mostly. <laughs> Uh, David Wood, Christian, his neighborhood is the whole planet. AP, atheist, his neighborhood is just a neighborhood. Atheist, draw your own conclusions. <laughs> Good point. D Wood, what's in your blue mug? Tea, coffee? Uh, yeah, th it changes from time to time. Today it is uh, iced coffee. Sometimes it is iced tea. Sometimes it is water. Sometimes soda but today it is Sometimes iced coffee it is uh, and then Sometimes ap oh and then same question for ap ap what's your beverage of choice turkish coffee you've said nope. before that that have you said before that turkish coffee is like greek coffee i drank i drank real greek coffee once and it was like mud but i loved it i wouldn't claim that it's actually greek coffee i i, I uh, what i do say is uh despite my a uh, severe uh anti-turkish uh bigotry <laughs> I would say that uh, they both have pretty much the same coffee, but they but both sides claim that it's actually theirs, mm. and that's, that's an endless discussion. Going I on. believe the Greeks. Uh, okay, I, I I my my favorite drink is actually Coke Zero, but I recently went to the hospital and I went to the doctor because my stomach has been burning for like two weeks now, and they told me you probably are developing something. You should not drink that anymore. So I'm drinking water now. Oh well, see, yeah. thanks Allah. Coke Zero. Uh, here, this is actually on topic here. White Lily says the Quran tells us it's a book for Arabs. Then we have non-Arabs Arabizing themselves, which leads me to believe Islam is an Arab supremacy religion. Levant no. and North Africa, not Arab, but forced to be Arab. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is just interesting that the position of the Quran is that everyone needs a book in their own language and you're responsible for the revelations that were given to your people in your language. And then somehow that gets twisted into the creator of the universe is obsessed with everyone talking and dressing and even going to the bathroom like a seventh century Arab. You got to become a seventh century. You got to live like a seventh century Arab. And again, the only the only reason is that the final revelation was the one to Arabs because they were the last people to get the revelation. Notice if the Japanese had been the last people to receive their revelation, uh, Muslims would be running around wearing kimonos. 
and carrying samurai swords. You, you see, look, I'm a samurai. I'm a samurai. I'm a samurai. You know I'm, I'm gonna speak. I gotta pray in Japanese. What? You know what's the funniest thing? Like I, I come from a religious family. I practice myself. I did adopt certain, um, certain Arabic or Arab things like, you know, putting this, putting a thing on my head when I'm, when I'm praying, when I'm going to certain places, wearing a, a robe, uh, sometimes during prayer and things like that. Um, but, uh, it's very funny to me that some people, um, take it so far that they start like using random Arabic words when they speak and like, oh, wallahi, wallahi, akhi. like, what are you doing? Yalla, habibi, yalla, yalla. <laughs> You're, you're, you're an English white guy. Why are you saying Wallahi, Wallahi, Akhi, Habibi? Oh, boy, it's funny. All right, so we have uh, we have more super chats, but let's go ahead and uh, start up this uh, start up this video here. And so, again, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, we're going to go through my original video. Uh, we can pause for any commentary we want. We want people to understand the argument so that when we see Fareed's response, we see how bad, or again, I haven't finished watching it, so maybe how good it really is. But here we go. D. Wood. Suppose we ask our Muslim friends, why did Allah reveal the Quran in Arabic? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Simple question, right? Here they'll say something like, because Arabic is such a rich language, or because Arabic is the perfect language for Allah to express his eloquence. Unfortunately for our Muslim friends, the Quran tells us exactly why Allah revealed the Quran in Arabic, and Allah's reasons for revealing the Quran in Arabic completely contradict what Muslims today believe about the Quran. Okay. This is why the, Notice Fareed, I said that at the very beginning, that's the point. What, what the Quran says about why it was revealed in Arabic completely contradict what you guys say. That's the point. So if you miss that, you missed the point. Muslim scholars never discuss what we're about to discuss. They don't want anyone to know what you're about to know. That's funny. I say they avoid this. They don't want to talk about it. And then as far as I could tell, Farid is avoiding it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and throwing his fans off the track of what I actually said. So this could be, this could be deliberate. This is pretty funny. Uh, we, we still don't know if he intended to do it or if, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. We shall, we shall see. Maybe we'll take a poll at the end and ask uh, if, if people think Fareed just completely missed the point or if he does get the point, but he's deliberately throwing people off the trail by pretending that he's responded to the point. Yeah. yeah. That's a judging. If you thing. think mm -hmm. I'm exaggerating, watch this until the end and explain to me how this information isn't utterly devastating to Dawah. Let's set the stage for the problem by recalling how these discussions about... Notice, I say, let's set the stage for the problem, right? I say, I'm setting the stage to get to the real problem here. And that the real problem is the one the guys want to avoid. So Fareed, if I say, here, here's what is setting... I'm, I'm saying how this topic gets introduced. And if you just focus on this beginning part, Fareed, then you're kind of missing the point that I say I'm getting to, that this is just setting the stage for. Get it? Uh, setting right. setting the stage uh, setting the stage is three words that's too much it's too much it's too much it's too way much. fewer it's way too many words say, I, say not three I, say not three stating to dawa let's set the stage for the problem by recalling how these discussions about the quran arise our Muslim friends invite us to convert to Islam, and we ask, why should we convert to Islam? And they say, because it's the truth. And we reply, <laughs> but lots of ideologies claim to be the truth. Why should we believe that Islam is the truth? Because and it is they the say, truth. because of the Quran, it's so masterfully written, it must be the word of God. <laughs> now, even before we open the Quran and start reading, we can spot an obvious difficulty with this wonderfully written argument. Romeo and Juliet was wonderfully written. The Brothers Karamazov was wonderfully written. The love song of J. Alfred Prufrock was wonderfully written. What in the name of common sense does all this wonderful writing have to do with whether these works are the word of God? As far as I can tell, absolutely nothing. 
But we're trying to be nice, so in spite of the absurdity of the claim, we open the Quran anyway, and we find the worst, most boring, most disorganized book we've ever read in our entire lives. Mm -hmm. Terrible beyond our already low expectations. Pretty bad. So we go back to our Muslim friends, and we tell them, as politely as we can, the Quran is less interesting, less impressive, and less enlightening than a phone book. Mm -hmm. True, true. And that's when our Muslim friends pull the ultimate trump card from the bottom of the desperation deck. They say, well, it only works in Arabic. <laughs> hey guys, uh, keep in mind, we're still, in the, we're still setting up the problem. This is still setting up the problem. This whole little intro here is telling people how we get to the problem. Because the problem is going to be this, that they're saying it only works in Arabic, and then... Who do we trust when we ask about, if we don't speak Arabic, how do we know? How do we know if it's really as awesome as the Dawah guys say? And how do we know? Do we listen to this guy who thinks the Quran is a joke? Do we listen to this guy who thinks the Quran is awesome? Who do we listen to? How do we know if we don't know? Because the Quran says, that's why the, that's, the Quran answers that and says, that's why you need a book in your own language. That's the problem we're getting to. This reminds me of one of your old, this, might, this reminds me of your old videos in general, the way you this is it. a this is a remake of an old video. I was thinking, um, I was thinking that I made certain videos that I made like ten or ten or ten or eleven years ago, um, that I would like to kind of update and expand. And this was one of the ones I thought I I always loved that point. I always loved that argument. Um, but I I kind of uh, I, I knew that I had not used all the passages I could. So the original was like I don't know ten minutes or twelve minutes or something like that. And I expanded it by including more passages from the Quran. But yeah, I thought the uh, that was a, that was a video I wanted to redo. Uh, yeah. Quick super quick super chat here. Uh, AP, since we're on what we drink, then we have AP. Do you like to watch American sports? Baseball, football, basketball, hockey, monster trucks. That's a sport. No, uh, no, not a, no. Uh, no, I, I I did. I once watched a basketball match when I was in Turkey, and because I had to, because I was on a business uh, thing uh, with 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 some people who came from a different country, and they went to the match, and I had to go with them. It was quite interesting to be there, but then when I look at the TV, uh, I just have no interest in it. Uh, I, I I tried looking at baseball a few times, and it just looks like the most boring thing in the world. Yeah. Nothing is happening for most of the time. Um, I still think the only sports that i'm actually interested in is the real thing that is actually called football not the american kind yeah. which, which you guys call Ugh. soccer oh. yeah. yeah so uh and then d wood do you like european football aka soccer uh no and really the, the only sport i actually watch is uh is nfl football uh occasionally since i'm from west virginia when the when the wvu mountaineers are doing really well sometimes i watch college football but yeah, that's all I watch. I did play a lot of soccer, though, in prison with all Central and South Americans. So I actually got uh, got pretty good. We were playing. We started by playing. Uh, the rest of us were started by playing full contact football. People kept like breaking ribs and and because we didn't have any pads, so guys kept like breaking. One guy broke his uh his uh, collarbone, and nice. uh, yeah, people were breaking their ribs. Anyway, people were getting hauled off the field every day, and finally they shut it down. We could only throw the football. We couldn't actually play football. Uh, nice. So anyway, started playing soccer. Soccer. Uh, hey, here you go. Saif said you are ignorant because you don't know Tafsir Sadi. Yeah, <laughs> <We don't, laughs> people, norm, people normally don't go to that. So um, let, me, let me tell you something. If you go to Turkey and you and you go to the average educated Turkish person and ask them about ask them about um, educated religious Turkish person about uh, Tafsir Sadi, they will probably not know what you. Uh, what it is or they will have heard of it and will not know anything about the contents which is true for us as well our point was we have heard of it but we have never heard anyone cite it the reason is because it is a it is a it is a tough seer that is uh very much preferred by the salafi gangs um i i come from a sufi background which is the complete opposite and most muslims around the world don't really you know hang around with the whole uh saudi salafi uh, ways of teaching and, and all that. Yeah. And I just, I go with what guys are using, right? In other words, yeah. if the Dawa guys are quoting Ibn Kathir, I'll start quoting Ibn Kathir. If they're quoting Bukhari, I go to Bukhari. I started reading Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim because that's what Nabil was telling me were the best sources. Like when I first started studying uh, Islam, 
um, to ref to actually refute it, uh, I, I instantly went for, I looked up what's the earliest biographical source and it's Ibn Ishaq. So I start, go, I start using that. And then Nabil later tells me, oh no, don't go to that. Go to uh, Sahih al-Bukhari or Sahih Muslim. So I start going to those. But then you just end up going, okay, what sources do you believe in? Let me interact with those. And guess what? People generally aren't quoting uh, Asadi to me. So. Stop oh, lying. You're so, you're so oh, dumb. Yeah. You're so dumb. Everything you say has been refuted now. Look, look, we got one of AP's fans coming over from his channel. If D Wood is the eye, AP is the leather, and AP is the leather strap, hijab must be the anus because he was an Oxford graduate. You see the level, <laughs> the level of, of critique you get from AP's fans versus my fans. It's so weird. Hey, stop stop messing with Muhammad's words. His his, his words are, are very precious, are very special. He <laughs> said he said the eyes are the leather strap of the anus. And by golly, they are. They are. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I failed my super chat. I must grow my Zabuba. Nice. You can't just grow. You can't just grow your Zabuba at will. Yeah. It's pronounced creature, creature, Kaffir. Creature, creature. Uh, Daryl says, heard from Hatun lately. Hope she's doing well. Yes, I heard from Hatun a couple times after everyone said that she was dead. So <laughs> she's either messaging me from from heaven or she's still alive oh, oh, still alive. Heaven. Farid is my favorite dawa yes yeah. he's a he's a, yeah. oh that's far four <laughs> no it's far four saying that oh, far four. Farid is my favorite dai yeah <laughs> far four hey guys Karan lasagna Karanya <laughs> video idea <laughs> there is that that was one of the only videos I ever watched from PewDiePie because I was like who's who's this PewDiePie that everyone's talking about and he was uh he was using the B word, but lasagna and insulting oh, yeah. and insulting the lasagna. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's talking about that other channel and saying, gonna be running for the mama. Yeah, that was fun. But I was like, oh, this guy's funny. That's why they watch him. T series. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get back to the video. Wait, let's see. All right, left all right, has, all right. Left has normalized anti white, anti male speech. Yeah, that's true. Mark McFlounder says, from the river to the sea, we shall all be healthy. Grab a big gulp and drink some camel pee. No, don't drink camel pee. It'll make you why, sick. That's one of the weirdest things, like even Nabil, who was insanely intelligent, back when he was still defending uh, Islam. That's one of the issues I brought up. Like, why, why is Muhammad, you're, come on, dude, you're going to medical school. Like, <laughs> drinking camel urine and he would he would do the exact same thing that our guys do he would find some article about some hormone being used from camel use hey this is the proof <laughs> i still got those emails i should like share them <laughs> i should like share Nabil's defenses of this stuff that's funny that's fu it's funny that he actually would do that yeah because that's that but but it's it's very interesting that um we know he's intelligent. You know he was intelligent. Uh, we have seen his work, his speeches, and all of that. But um, you can blind yourself so much by believing in this certain thing that you will just disregard everything you know and and all all logic that you are aware of, and go with such arguments. Because mm -hmm. I mean, what, what that argument is basically uh, basically is is uh, they use examples of um, of an extract you know, from mm -hmm. urine, for example, being used in certain medication. And like, you mm -hmm. look, you see, look, you see, it's beneficial. That's not yeah. the same as drinking. Drinking sugar. it. Yeah, that's not the same thing. And that's what, that's exactly what I, that's exactly what I told him. You're like, you know, it doesn't work like that, dude. Um, but notice, even then, even then it was, hey, Nobel is giving us a presentation. He gave a presentation at Mike Lacona's house on the miraculous scientific insights of Muhammad and the Quran. And he went to... Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim to find these passages that supposedly contain miraculous scientific knowledge. That's when, that's when, uh, you know, I wouldn't know how to respond to some of that there while he's giving the presentation, except to, to say, hey, is that really what it's saying? And so on. But then afterwards, I would go and actually look up the passages and I would respond to him. And I would go, look, that's not even what it said. That's not even what it actually, what's not even what the passage actually said. But look at this other passage. He is clearly advocating drinking camel urine as this cure for stomach. And then and then the guys who are supposedly cured going to flip out and and kill his shepherd. It seems like they would have killed him if they hadn't been healed. Right? Like, doesn't it seem so like challenging 
like is are are these stories being doctored? That's a clear case. That story in the Muslim sources about these guys coming uh, to Muhammad and converting to Islam and saying they they they're not feeling well and stuff. And he tells them to drink camel urine, and they drink camel urine. And the Quran says, and then they were healed, and got enraged and went and killed Muhammad's shepherd. And it's like, wait, what? Like what? What's more? What's more plausible here? <laughs> like these guys drank camel urine. It didn't help. They felt even worse and they became enraged, realized Muhammad was a false prophet, went and killed a shepherd. Or these guys are amazingly healed by camel urine and then they do, then they flip out after being after being cured of their uh, stomach problems and then they go kill Muhammad's shepherd. Like what's more likely? So anyway. All of it. Yeah. Uh, I knew right when I saw David Wood's bookshelf that he was a real man and I could trust him. He is not like AP or these other nerds. Who either don't read books, no bookshelf, or have their uh, bookshelves, or have their bookshelves built by someone else. That is a completely valid point. I have a um, pile here. That's that counts. Yeah, yo, yeah. yeah. That's all. That's all. Atheists can do is get a little little pile of a couple books. It's pretty pretty yeah. sad. But anyway, that's atheism for you. All right, back to this awesome video. Here we start wondering. If Islam is the religion for all people, why would the main evidence for Islam only work in one language, mm -hmm, a language mm -hmm. that most people do not speak? Mm -hmm. Even native Arabic speakers can't understand much of the Quran because it's written in classical Arabic. But it gets worse because even classical Arabic scholars can't understand parts of the Quran. The Arabic scholar Gert Puin, for instance, says this. The Quran claims for itself that it is mubin, mm -hmm, or clear. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it, you will notice that every fifth sentence or so simply doesn't make sense. Many Muslims and Orientalists will tell you otherwise, of course, but the fact is that a fifth of the Quranic text is just incomprehensible. Mm -hmm. This is what has caused the traditional anxiety regarding translation. If the Quran is not comprehensible, if it can't even be understood in Arabic, then it's not translatable. People this is what fear people that. Talking. And since the you Quran claims repeatedly to be clear, but obviously is not, as even speakers of Arabic will tell you, there is a contradiction. Yeah, this is exactly what Fareed is going to fixate on, even though this is just to set up the problem. But let's let's look at the very next. It. Yeah, let's look at the very next quotation so I can explain for everyone who, like Fareed, completely missed the point where I said I'm setting up the problem. Uh, but let's go ahead and listen to the next quotation and then I'll explain it for Fareed since we know he's watching. The Iranian scholar Ali Dashti in his book 23 Years adds... The Quran contains sentences which are incomplete and not fully intelligible without the aid of commentaries, foreign words, unfamiliar Arabic words, and words used with other than the normal meaning, adjectives and verbs inflected without observance of the concords of gender and number, illogically and ungrammatically applied pronouns which sometimes have no referent, and predicates which in rhymed passages are often remote from the subjects. These and other such aberrations in the language have given scope to critics who deny the Quran's eloquence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're supposed to believe that the Quran is from God because of its clarity and eloquence when experts tell us that it's hopelessly unclear and not very good at all. This is where our Muslim friends jump in and tell us, don't trust the experts, trust the Dawah guys who say that the Quran is the most amazing book ever. Yes, the Dawa guys, those honest and dependable Boy Scouts who assured us that the Quran has been perfectly preserved, but later admitted that it was all a lie. The Dawa guys, those upright and credible do-gooders who assured us that the Quran is filled with miraculous scientific insights, but later admitted that it was all a lie. The Dawa guys, those compulsive liars who assure us that the Quran is supernaturally eloquent and must be from God. And we just have to believe them. We just have to take their word for it. Okay, that notice, that's setting up the problem, right? So if the, if the main argument of the Quran is that the Quran is somehow so amazing that y you read it and you see its eloquence and clarity and it's just so amazing that it has to come from God. Suppose you took that seriously, which I wouldn't because there are things that are way clearer and things that are way more eloquent than the Quran based on everything I can see. 
But uh, so notice that a couple of problems that were already set up. The problem has been set up by now. So one, how do I know that the Quran is far more eloquent than, let's say, Romeo and Juliet? How do, how do I know that? If it all, and Muslims say, ah, but it only works in Arabic, right? Because so notice, I can sit there and read the Quran and go, this is terrible. This is awful. This is the worst book I've ever written. And then, ah, but it only works in Arabic. Now, notice, I, I don't speak Arabic. So what's the problem now? If I'm going to believe the argument, I just have to take someone's word for it, right? I just have to listen to someone tell me that the Quran is supernaturally eloquent. All right. How do I know who to listen to? Do I listen to Garrett Poen, who says that about a fifth of the Quran is completely incomprehensible? It's not clear at all. They can't, it can't even be understood in Arabic. Do I listen to him? Because if so, I would have to reject the clarity. Do I listen to Ali Dashti, who says, who acknowledges that all these problems show that gives, as he says, gives scope to those who deny the Quran's eloquence? Do I listen to him? Who do I listen to here? Do I listen to the Dawah guys? Notice, if I can't examine the evidence for myself, then I just have to listen to someone else, right? This, mm -hmm. is, this is the entire problem that the Quran claims it is fixing. The Quran claims to be solving this problem. So if I'm going to know that the Quran is from God, how do I know? What argument does the Quran give? Well, it's supernatural eloquence. Okay, I'm not in a position to judge whether it's supernaturally eloquent. How would I even know? We have to listen to someone. Okay, who do I listen to? Do I listen to guys who say it's a total joke or do I listen to guys who say it has to be from God? Who do I listen to here? Well, listen to those guys. Why? Why would I listen to those guys? Why not listen to those guys? Notice, I would, have to, I would have to know what the evidence is before I decide, oh, these guys over here are telling the truth. These guys over here are lying. I would, have to, I would have to have some standard by which to judge, right? But I don't have that. That's the point. And that's the, that's the situation that the Quran addresses. The Quran actually addresses this problem because it says that was the, the problem that the Arabs had. The Arab, Allah had revealed revelations in other languages. So there were Jews in Arabia who could have told the Arabs, what's in the Torah? How do the mm -hmm. Arabs know whether to trust what the Jews are saying? How do you know that? How do you know they're not rep misrepresenting the Torah? How do you know? How do you know they're telling you the truth about what's in the Torah? How do you know? You need a revelation in your own language, guys. This is not me speaking. This is what the Quran is saying. The Quran says that that's why Allah gave a book to the Arabs in their language, so that they wouldn't have to just listen to what someone else was saying about their book, right? So notice, guys, this is the entire problem. And, and again, I only watched the beginning of Farid's video. I don't know if he actually answers this problem. Based on what I started watching, he completely missed the point. And he starts going after this. Oh, but it is eloquent, uh, right? Check out the problem here. The Quran says that the reason the Arabs needed a revelation in their own language was so that they could judge things in their own language and know the evidence in their own language and not have to depend on someone else telling them. That's the problem. Yeah. And that's the point of me pointing out that based on what the Dawah guys tell us, that's the position we're all in right now. We all, we, the Quran, the evidence of the Quran only works in Arabic and what we're all supposed to just pick who we want to listen to. And we don't know. So we could just flip a coin. Okay, heads, we listen to the Dawah guys. Tails, we listen to the critics. And then we'll just, and based on that, we'll decide whether Islam is true or not. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And that's the, the Quran says it was sent to avoid that problem. And Muslims tell us, no, the Quran is sent to put everyone in that problem. It's amazing stuff. Very lucid point. Uh, easy to understand. Very, uh, very crucial but I'm pretty sure that he's going to miss the point or misrepresent it. Yeah. Unfortunately. Um, born again, Stefan, love you guys. David, any recommendation for books and authors that opened your leather straps, gave you deeper insights into Christianity? Yeah, the Bible. What books, man? Born I understand that books are for losers. Um, <clears throat> I remember early on, I don't remember what the book is called, but it was a book by John Stott. And it was uh, like, I didn't know, because I'd become a Christian. I'd become a Christian. Uh, just based on believing that Jesus rose from the dead and came to believe in God and believe that Jesus rose from the dead, became a Christian, knew next door to nothing about anything and started doing Bible studies from like, like every group that would come up. So I was doing like Bible studies from prosper the prosperity uh, guys because they would send free Bible studies. I was doing uh, Seventh-day Adventist Bible studies because they would send in free Bible studies. I was just doing everything that was, that was uh, like a free Bible study and so on. 
And uh, I remember reading a book by John Stott that I thought was really awesome. And other than that, uh, lots of apologetics um, for particular things. As far as things that are relevant for today, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Francis Schaeffer, as far as things that are going on in the world. So some Francis, a uh, couple of the Francis Schaeffer's main books, um, G.K. Chesterton, C.S. Lewis. Those guys are those guys are famous for a reason. Very, very good. Very interesting stuff. Uh, I'll go one, one or two more super chats here and then jump back into the video. Daniel, Daniel Kikachu, he's cheek, he's cheeky like a Pikachu, says sleeping with kids is a okay. That is so sick. I'd rather be gay. <laughs> <laughs> you should make a video saying Daniel Hakikachu made me gay. <laughs> <laughs> D Wood drinking Zum Zum water. You know, Nabil's, uh, Nabil's um, parents uh, went on the Hajj. So uh -huh. they took the they took the pilgrimage. Back in the day, you couldn't you uh, uh, Ahmadis weren't allowed. And then they came up with like a don't ask, don't tell type policy where you wouldn't ask that you wouldn't ask if people are Ahmadis. And so they were able to go and they brought back Zamzam water. And I remember I was thinking, gosh, I should I should steal a sip of that Zamzam water just to say that I've had Zamzam water. <laughs> but I didn't. I, dra I, I drank it. My, my my parents also went to the Hajj. They brought some back. They brought lots of it back, actually. But there, I think there's a limit to it. But um, I drank it, and I always thought there is really nothing special about it. But when I when, it, when I was like when I, when I started taking my religion more seriously, I thought, okay, there is supposed to be something special about it. But again, there was nothing special about it. Um, <laughs> you should make a video. I drank Zam Zam water, then left Islam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or well, no, I, I drank Zum Zum water. Then this happened. And then this happened. It. Yeah, it's I like, became an apostate. That's what. No, it's like it's just going to be like nothing happened. Uh, can you guys quickly review yeah. this channel called GDF? You familiar with that? He's very anti-Israel and made a video proving the so-called genocide. Uh, yeah, we're not. Nah. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if that's. Uh, is that getting a ton of a ton of views or something like that? Because we don't want to go like lots of people are supposedly. Now it looks like a garbage channel. channel. Uh, uh, okay, then no, we probably won't. Yeah. Islam is Arab cultural imperialism. Yeah. Um, man, this David guy sounds smart. He should start doing live streams, maybe even with an atheist sidekick. Yeah, because uh, Far Four here is talking about me in this video. Yep, I'm pretty dope. All right, let's get back to this. Notice, we're supposed to convert to Islam because of the supernatural eloquence of the Quran. But how are we supposed to know that the Quran is supernaturally eloquent mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when we don't speak Arabic? Yep, got the problem. What our Muslim friends are really telling us is this. We either need to trust what the Dawah guys say about the Quran without understanding the evidence for ourselves, or we need to spend years studying classical Arabic so that we can perhaps find the evidence for ourselves someday. So we can either accept what the Dawah guys say about their book without investigating, or we can spend years learning another language so that we can eventually investigate the matter on our own. Why is this a problem? It's a problem because it completely contradicts the Quran. Got that, everyone? So notice, if I say there's this language that you don't speak, and it's got the evidence that that's the true religion over there in this language, but the evidence is in this language that you don't speak. You've got two options there. One, if you want to, if you want to uh, know that this is the truth. One, you could just take someone's word for it, in which case, as I pointed out, whose word do you take for it? Like the guys who are saying it's great or the guys who are saying it's garbage? Um, or even if, you, even if you're taking the word of people who believe in it, do you take the word of the jihadi or the dude of the nice guy? Do you take the Sunni or the or the Shia? What do you do? Who's who's word? Who are you supposed to listen to here? Or the alternative is you can spend years of your life learning that language to then perhaps get to the evidence somehow. And you could say, well, that's you know that's fair. It's fair. God wants to know if you're really dedicated, and so you're gonna wait. Notice, even there, you'd have to say, why should I even think at a preliminary level? that this is important enough that I have to go out and learn a new language because it seems like a stupid argument to begin with. So why would I even, why would I even think that I want to do that sort of thing? 
Um, but notice, if you if you wanted to say, yes, well, if God gives you, tells you that the revelation is over here, then if you're really interested, you're going to study that language based on just the claim. If you wanted to do that, if you wanted to do that, uh, okay, you could go ahead and learn that language. But look, guess what? The Muslims, I mean, the Arabs, the seventh century Arabs could have done that. They could have said, ah, the Jews have a revelation in their language. Let's all learn Hebrew. Let's spend years learning Hebrew so we can get to it. The Quran says that it was sent so that, so that Arabs did not have to be in that position. The Quran says it was given to Arabs to avoid that situation, to avoid them either having to listen to what Jews and Christians were saying without knowing that it's true or not, because they don't have a revelation in their own language, or having to learn the other language, having to go learn Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic to understand the scriptures. Allah but wants the to problem avoid. Is, the problem is that the Jews started worshiping uh, Ezra and saying, Ezra is the son of Allah. That's why it didn't, it didn't work. You see? No. You see? All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that is the problem. And you're about to see how. Oh, yeah. Here goes. According Everyone to the Quran, this? Allah has sent prophets to every nation. In Surah 16, verse 36 of the Quran, Allah says, And verily, we have raised in every nation a messenger, proclaiming, Serve Allah and shun false gods. Don't forget what Allah says here. A messenger, a rasul, was sent to every nation to guide people. Similarly, in Surah 10, verse 47, we read, And for every nation there is a messenger, and when their messenger cometh on the day of judgment, it will be judged between them fairly, and they will not be wronged. All right, everyone got that? A, mm -hmm. a messenger has been sent to every nation. But there's about to be a problem, because it's going to say that the Arabs had no messenger. So every nation has received a messenger, the Arabs didn't. So let's go ahead and see what this says. So Allah sent a messenger to every nation. But the Arabs were the last to receive guidance, which is why Muhammad was the last of the messengers. How do we know Muhammad was last? Let's find out. In Surah 36, verses 2 through 6, Allah declares, I swear by the Quran full of wisdom, most surely you, Muhammad, are one of the apostles on a right way, a revelation of the mighty, the merciful, that you may warn a people whose fathers were not warned, so they are heedless. Do the math here. A messenger had been sent to every nation, mm -hmm. but the people of Arabia hadn't been warned. Hmm. We'll go ahead and ignore the fact that, according to the Quran, Abraham and Ishmael were in Mecca, where they built the Kaaba. I guess they just kept quiet while they were in Arabia, constructing a house of worship. It is, uh, it is weird how Abraham and Ishmael got all the religious practices right, because the pagans somehow kept up the correct religious practices of walking around the Kaaba and so on uh, for many, many centuries beyond that. But didn't actually get the theology right somehow. Okay, interesting. No warner. What's that? They, had, they didn't know. They had no idea. They were deceived by these mm -hmm. jinns and <laughs> thought, oh, they, they, are, they are gods. I think they are the daughters of, of Allah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then there are these other jinns oh, that are also right. friendly gods. So looks like we should worship them too now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just to the happens. people of Arabia before Muhammad. But every other nation had its messenger. Surah 34, verses 43 to 44. And when our clear communications clear. are recited to them, they mm -hmm. say, This is not but a man who desires to turn you away from that which your fathers worshipped. And they say, This is not but a lie that is forged. And those who disbelieve say of the truth when it comes to them, This is only clear enchantment. And we have not given them any books which they read, nor did we send to them before you, Muhammad, a warner. No warner. No warner before Muhammad. Zero. Sorry, Abraham and Ishmael. Should have spoke up. Surah 32, verse 3. Or do they say he has forged it? Nay, it is the truth from your Lord that you, Muhammad, may warn a people to whom no warner has come before you, that they may follow the right direction. Seems simple to me. So, a messenger had been sent to every nation, mm -hmm. but no messenger had come to the Arabs. Mm -hmm. And this is why Allah sent Muhammad. 
Once Muhammad had been sent to the Arabs, the last people to get their messenger, every nation had been warned. Hmm. This seems very simple to me, the point that, the, the, like, it's dumb what the Quran is saying, but it's easy to understand what it's saying. Every nation had its warner. The Arabs were last. And, that, and since Muhammad had come, then everyone had their warner in their own language. Every people had their own had their own warner in their own language. Seems pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. As we read in Surah 35, verse 24, Surely we have sent you, Muhammad, with the truth, as a bearer of good news and a warner, and there is not a people, but a warner has gone among them. Everyone had their warner According now. According to the Quran, Muhammad was sent to warn his people, Arabs. Mm -hmm. Other groups had their own warners. True. Good point, David. And the Quran is clear that when Allah sends a messenger to a group, he sends a messenger who speaks the language of that group. Mm -hmm. Surah 14, uh -huh. verse... Don't miss this, guys. Because <laughs> you can just make a video out of this point alone, I think. Uh, Allah only sends a messenger to a people in the language of that people speaks the language of the people he's a messenger to. Which is going to raise an obvious problem here. Four, and we sent not a messenger except with the language of his people in order that he might make the message clear for them. So that's why Abraham and Ishmael didn't warn the people of Mecca. Wrong language. Problem solved. Here's where you should start to see a problem for the Muslim view mm -hmm. of Muhammad. Yep. If Allah only sends a messenger who speaks the language of the group he's sent to, mm -hmm. how can Muhammad be the messenger for the entire world? Did Muhammad uh, speak English? What? Excuse me. Haven't you heard of all the other prophets that Allah sent? All the other prophets that Allah also sent? All of mm -hmm. those those th thousands of prophets that Allah sent. Have you heard of them? Uh, um, the ones that were sent to, you know, the to, to, to the Americas, to mm -hmm. the Southeast Asian nations, mm -hmm. uh, to the Pacific Islanders, all around the world, to the English speaking people, all of these messengers, they were all sent to their all to, to, to the different people for their own languages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Yep, we are, yeah, this is, guys, this is going to be a problem. This is going to be a problem. Everyone's got their warner in their language. Going to be a problem, because it doesn't we just fit don't, with we just what don't know. Saying. We just don't know where those prophets went, what happened. Yeah, they, but everyone's got their warner that they're supposed to listen to. Interesting. Now, notice, guys, if you're in, if you're in 7th century Arabia, and you're an Arab, and you've got Jews there, and they're talking about uh, these prophets, and you've got Christians there, and they're talking about these prophets, and you're thinking, hey, everyone else got these prophets. What about us? You start thinking, ah, well, it looks like other groups had their prophets. In other words, Muhammad's, Muhammad's claims could have sounded persuasive to you. Guys, everyone else had their revelation pointing people towards monotheism. We're just, we're the last group. We're, we're, we're left behind. So we need to get on track. Here's, here's Islam. Here's Islam for us. I'm the messenger to the Arabs. Hmm. Then the problem arises because eventually as Muslims spread, they realize, hey, these other, other people around the world don't seem to have this messenger that we're, they're supposed to have. Oh, it must have all been corrupted. Not what Allah said, but it's what they concluded. Um, all right, a couple of super chats real quick. And what, what matters is not what Allah says. What matters is what Muslims conclude. Yeah, I know. It doesn't matter what a lot. That, and that's the problem. Like, <laughs> Islam today is submission to the Dawah guys. It's not submission yeah. to Allah and Muhammad. Yeah. Uh, read as Andrew Tate. I think Ked Ace said it best. Do unto others <laughs> as you would have them do to you. <laughs> Pop G. <laughs> what an idiot. Man. He oh, hey, this is interesting. Oh, go, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, I'm saying, uh, echoing uh, Erudite here says, uh, Fareed just posted another response to the video. Uh-oh. Really? Well, depending yeah. On, yeah, depending on how long it takes us to get through his first video, we may jump into the second video or may save that for another another time. Uh, based on how good his first video is. <laughs> uh, Goofus here says, little secret, some aircraft which fly the Hajj can't take the weight 
back from Saudi, Zamzam is poured out and refilled abroad with airport water. Oh, that's funny. They're saying that people are trying to haul back Zamzam water and they dump it out and then fill it <laughs> fill it when they get back. I guess the, I, would, I, I guess the airport, true. I guess the airlines do it. They say, hey, put your Zamzam water in the uh, cargo there. And, uh, OK. And then they dump it out and then fill it up at the next place. And people don't know. That's funny, but I need evidence. for. It. Yeah, we'll need proof. We need the proof. <laughs> What's the proof? Zabiba, Zabubi, Momo's tiny Zubi. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Oh. I didn't put it to music because uh, <laughs> let's see. AstroTurf equals fake grassroots. You should get Mordecai Kedar on your show, professor of Arab culture at Bar Ilan. I've seen that name before. Who is he? You familiar with him? Uh, I've seen Mordecai. that name a bunch of times. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, for my two favorite Islamophobes. Bar Ilan is a, is a university in Israel. Uh, yes, we are the kings of Islamophobia. Uh, from the Zabuba to the Zabiba, Muhammad was an amoeba. <laughs> what color is what color is your Zabiba? What color is your Zabiba? We need to uh, we need to uh, make some fake Zabibas, but like uh, dude, all you need is a picture of shake your booty and like uh, put like a a different color Zabiba on there and just put down at the bottom what color is your Zabiba. <laughs> 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 like I don't know I, if that, I, sometimes I, I sometimes when I make when I make a when I make a, a, a shaky booty movie I will use that yeah sometimes I, sometimes I think oh that's funny to me so everyone's gonna think it's funny and then no one thinks no one else thinks it's funny but I don't know it's hilarious. Uh, let's see intelligent people fall for bad ideas all the time see Russian intelligentsia uh, Nabil and Islam yeah people do uh, yes people do fall for bad ideas uh much more frequently than people would be aware of yeah guys i regret to interrupt this service but i have terrible news the jews have finally managed to murder far four the far four here is the far four here is a jewish imposter i i knew it hey anyway, wait and then we got a comment from far four uh when i do my little dance yeah i got the perfect move <laughs> <laughs> nice uh, let's see here. David, what made Nabil question Islam? Um, I mean, you could check out, you can check out Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus. But uh, yeah, so Nabil over, over a period of time came to uh, believe that Christians actually have good reasons for what we believe, but he still believed that Islam has uh, even more uh, powerful reasons to believe. And so we started going through there and you know, started seeing the perfect preservation of the Quran challenged and the scientific miracles challenged and so on. Uh, he started seeing some problems with Muhammad and, uh, you know, taking the the uh, women as captives. It, it was specifically it was specifically Surah wow. 4, verse 24, when you read it in context of the historical background of Sunan Abu Daud, where they captured women who are married and they capture their husbands. So it's not it's not men who had died in battle. Um, some people would be sympathetic to the idea of, hey, if you've got an army, all the men go out to fight. The men are dead. Uh, the women sir, if the women survive, what do you do with them? What do you do with the women uh, there? Uh, but this was a situation where they captured the men and the women. And the the Allah responded and said, of course, you can have sex with these women. You've captured them, even though they were married. And uh, Nabil, when we talked about that, he acted like he had no problem. He later admitted it was really bothering him. He was thinking like, what, what if this were my mother and my sister and stuff like that? And he said it started bothering him. Uh, so some of the moral issues with Muhammad combined with seeing that his arguments didn't work nearly as well as he thought, even that, even that didn't convince him. It just got him to a point where he's like, like open and he asked God to give him a sign. And then God gave him a sign, and then he asked for three more, and then he got three more, and anyway. Noise. But you can see all this by, well, matter of fact, you can just watch his testimony video, and you can, you can see some of this. Um, all right, we'll read one more Super Chat, and then we'll jump back into the video. AP, I was told you're a liar, because you said the sun sets in a muddy pool, but actually it sets in a hot spring, like an anime girl. Care to explain? <laughs> It sets in a hot spring. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. There is actually, um, 
if you look at the at the earliest tafsirs, um, there there is a whole discussion. This, this was actually my point when uh, when I talked about the whole sunsetting and Amari spring issue, um, and they tried to you know Farid and others tried to bring this objection. No, 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 no. Muslims have interpreted it differently, and it doesn't mean literally sunsets and Amari spring. The funny thing is, if you go to the if you go to tafsir al Tabari, for example, it never suggests that there is a different, different interpretation. It does, however. Um, mention different interpretations on what exactly that spring is that it's that the sun sets in and then uh, if it's a, a a black a dark muddy spring if it's a hot spring and there is a whole discussion around that and uh, some say that it's it's a muddy pool and others say it's a hot spring how dare you say it's a muddy pool mm-hmm. um yeah so that, that that's basically it the quran is um completely ignorant and the early Muslim commentators were just as ignorant. Unfortunately, later they realized once they got out of Arabia that the world isn't actually this weird bed where the sun sets in a muddy spring. So they tried to change Liar. things. All right. Yeah. Liar. And Russian <laughs> and Spanish oh, this is, and Mandarin this is on language. Here we go. Here's where you should start to see a problem for the Muslim view of mm-hmm. Muhammad. Mm-hmm. If Allah only sends a messenger who speaks the language of the group he's sent to, how can Muhammad be the messenger for the entire world? Did Muhammad speak English and Russian and Spanish and Mandarin and Swahili? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. No? Then according to Allah, he's not the messenger for people who speak English or Russian or Spanish or Mandarin or Swahili. Allah specifically says in Surah 42, verse 7, that the Quran was revealed in Arabic to warn the Arabs who lived in and around Mecca. And thus have we revealed to you, Muhammad, an Arabic Quran, Mm -hmm. that you may warn the mother city, Mecca, and those around it, and that you may give warning of the day of gathering together, wherein is no doubt. A party Mm -hmm. shall be in the garden and another party in the burning fire. Hmm. It's an Arabic revelation for people who speak Arabic. Surah Hmm. 44, verse 58. Verily, we have made this Quran easy in thy tongue in order that they may give heed. Notice, everyone, the reason it's in Arabic, easy in Arabic, is so that they may give heed. Who? Who's this talking? It doesn't make it doesn't make sense to say he's made this Quran easy for people who speak other languages so that they may give heed. What are you talking about? It's not easy. It's hopelessly it's hopelessly difficult. Allah In made the Quran face. easy mm-hmm. for who? People who speak Italian? No. In thy tongue. In your language. Why? In your language that they may give heed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They who? Arabic speakers. Yep, yep. Good Surah point. 43, verses 2 through 4. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I, I like, uh, I find it funny how you're talking here, like you're explaining it to, to idiots. Like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, By the book that makes things clear, we have made it a Quran in Arabic that ye may be able to understand. Notice. It's in Arabic, so you can understand it, dummies. <laughs> does this, does it does saying, "Hey, it's in Arabic, so you English speakers can understand it"? No, it doesn't make any sense, right? It only no, it, makes it's sense. Try, it's trying to say it is in Arabic, so learn Arabic to understand. Yeah, it. you dummies, and learn wisdom. And verily, it is in the mother of the book. What in the Quran our has a mother? Presence, high in dignity, full of wisdom. Oh, the Quran has a mother. It has a mother. <laughs> So if it's the word of Allah, but the Quran has a mother, then that means Allah had sex with the mother of the book and produced the Quran as an offspring. You see, Allah has sex with the mother of the book. Allah does have a wife. You see. (laughs) Allah made the Quran in Arabic so that people who speak Arabic Mm -hmm. can understand it. He produced it. If you don't speak Arabic, it's not for you. (laughs) Surah 26, verse... Allah boned the mother of the book <laughs> <laughs> on Quran only fans. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. That's wrong. 
Guys, if you don't know what I'm doing there, I'm making fun of their argument. That's what they said. We say Jesus, the son of God. Who did God have sex with? This is 192. That, that's, one. that's the Quran's own argument. It's so, it's so, it's so yeah. bad. I mean, you could make so many different arguments, but it says, uh, how can they say that, that, he, that he has a son when he doesn't have a, uh, have a partner? Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. But he does have a partner, the mother of the book. <laughs> 96. And most surely, this is a revelation from the Lord of the worlds. The faithful spirit has descended with it upon your heart that you, Muhammad, may be of the warners in plain Arabic language. And most surely the same is in the scriptures of the ancients. Muhammad was one of many warners. Mm -hmm. He's the warner in plain Arabic language. Quran says but he it. brought the same message that's in the scriptures brought by other warners in other languages. Says it right there. Surah 41, verses 2 to 3. A revelation from Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, a book whereof the verses are explained in detail, a Quran in Arabic, Arabic. for people who know. It's in Arabic. Think about this for a moment. Allah says he revealed the Quran in Arabic so that Muhammad could warn the people in and around Mecca. Mm -hmm. He revealed Mm -hmm. the Quran in Arabic to warn Arabs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. why did the Arabs need a revelation in Arabic? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There were Jews and Christians in Arabia, and according to the Quran, Jews and Christians had reliable scripture from God. The Mm -hmm. Arabs could have simply listened to what Jews and Christians were saying about their books. So why did the Arabs need a book in their own language? Muslims today will say, because the scriptures of the Jews and Christians were corrupted. Here again, that's not what the Quran says. The Quran affirms the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the scriptures of the Jews and Christians. The Quran, according to Allah, confirms previous scriptures in Arabic. Prove it. Surah 46. Prove it. Verse 12. Oh, it's right there. And before this Quran was the book of Moses as a guide and a mercy. And this book, the Quran, confirms it in the Arabic tongue to admonish the unjust and as glad tidings to those who do right. This doesn't seem difficult the to me. The Quran confirms previous scriptures in the Arabic language mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so that Arabs will know that these books are the word of Allah. Mm-hmm. See how this works? If you were a 7th century Arab and you saw Jews claiming that they had a book from God, how would you know whether to believe them? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You don't understand Hebrew. How would you know if their book is from God? Good point. You would know because Allah gave you a book in your language that confirms the books in other languages. Ah, now I get According it. According to the Quran, it makes absolutely no sense for Zero. Allah to reveal a book to a group of people unless that book is revealed in a language that the people understand. Uh-huh. Surah 41, verse 44. And if we had sent this as a Quran in a foreign language other than Arabic, they would have said, why are not its verses explained in detail in our language? What? A book not in Arabic and the messenger an Arab? Notice, <laughs> if, someone, if someone says that they, there's a revelation to you that's not in your language, like, what? Why, why aren't its verses in a language I understand? The Quran presents this as, a, as, a, as an important objection to someone giving you a book that's not in your language or a revelation that's not in your language. Why isn't it explained in my language? How can you expect me to believe it I don't, if I don't know the language? Well, wow. According to the Quran, if Allah hadn't given a revelation in Arabic, the Arabs would have had an excuse for not obeying Allah. Mm-hmm. Surah 6, verses 155 to 157. Very important passage. And here, this, Quran, is a book we have revealed, blessed. Therefore follow it and guard against evil, that mercy may be shown to you. Lest you say that the book was only revealed to two parties before us, and we were truly unaware of what they read. Or lest you should say, if the book had been revealed to us, 
we would certainly have been better guided than they. Guys, you get it? So notice, and this is a book we have revealed, blessed. Therefore, follow it and guard against evil, right? So Allah has, who's he speaking to here? He's speaking to Arabs. This is a book we've revealed. And the reason we're revealing to you this book, because according to the Quran, there are other books. Why not believe in those other books? Well, if I didn't give you a book in your language, notice 156 there, lest you should say the book was only revealed to two parties before us. Notice that the Quran's position is that countries around, different nations around the world had their revelations. They all had their revelations. What were Arabs familiar with? They're only familiar with, they're only familiar with Jews and Christians, as far as people who are, uh, you know, supposedly preaching the same prophets and so on that Muhammad is preaching. So Arabs would have been stuck in the position of, of saying, oh my goodness, uh, what are you tell? Are you telling us that God only revealed stuff to, to, two, to two groups before us? And we don't even know what they read. How do we take their word for it? Verse 157, or lest you should say, if the book had been revealed to us, we would certainly have been better guided than they. If Allah doesn't give you a book in your own language, you would be in the position of saying, hey, Allah, you gave a revelation to Jews in Hebrew. You gave a revelation to Christians in Greek. You gave us no revelation in our language. If you had given us a revelation in a language we understand, we would have we would have served you. We would have served you even better than they had. We would have we would have followed you. But you never gave us a revelation in a in a language we could understand. Why didn't you do that? That's what Allah says He's trying to avoid. And what do Muslims today tell us? No, we all have to just go with this book in a language we don't understand. When Allah says that's what he's trying to avoid with the Quran. Well, it's wow, wow, wow. clear as day, I would say. I think th this, this is actually very much in line with with what uh, with one of my favorite issues that I that I um, that I talked about so much in the past, which is that um, when you, when you look at uh, the Quran and you look at Muhammad's uh, words, the Hadith about the things that are about to happen. Um, the, the signs that are about to appear and the responses that he gives to people um, at certain points who ask him when the hour will come. Um, he makes it look like it is imminent. It will come in his own lifetime or immediately after him. And uh, it, it makes sense then within that framework that uh, Muhammad uh, not only preached that uh, this is the end of time, the end is going to come any 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 moment now but uh he also preached that therefore the, you guys the arabs are the last people of all of all humanity to receive a message in their own language so save yourselves now before it's too late mm -hmm. if a book isn't revealed in your language you're just not responsible for following the book so, did Allah reveal the Quran because all other revelations had been corrupted? No, that's a Muslim myth. Allah revealed the Quran so that Arabs wouldn't be able to complain that they didn't have an inspired book in their own language. The position of the Quran, then, goes something like this. Here we go. Allah yes. sent messengers to every nation, Everyone. and he inspired scriptures for different groups of people. Mm -hmm. These scriptures are reliable and authoritative for the groups they were revealed to. Good point. As of the early 7th century, Arabs didn't have a revelation in their own language. Mm -hmm. But these Arabs couldn't simply trust what Jews and Christians were saying about the Torah mm -hmm. and the gospel. How would Arabs know if Jews and Christians were telling the truth? So Arabs needed a revelation in Arabic. That's why Allah sent Muhammad. Pretty simple. Now that Arabs have the Quran, they can read the Quran. Other groups have their own books in their own languages. Uh -huh. This is why Allah in the Quran orders Jews and Christians to follow their own scriptures, not the Quran. Uh -huh. In Surah 5, verse 43, uh -huh. some Jews come to Muhammad to settle a dispute. How does Allah uh -huh. respond? How come they unto thee, Muhammad, for judgment when they have the Torah? wherein Allah hath delivered judgment for them. Mm -hmm. Notice what Allah says. Muhammad, why are Jews coming to you when they have their own book? They don't need you. You're the messenger to the Arabs, mm -hmm. not to the Jews. Good point. Surah 5, verse 68. 
Say, O people of the book, Jews and Christians, ye have no ground to stand upon unless ye stand fast by the law, the gospel, and all the revelation that has come to you from your Lord. Jews and Christians are supposed to follow the revelations that came to them. They're supposed to believe in Muhammad. They're supposed to believe in all of the messengers, but they're supposed to live by and judge by the revelations brought to them by their messengers. Mm -hmm. Allah sent a messenger to every nation. People are responsible for obeying the messenger who was sent to them speaking their language. Correct. That's the position of the Quran. And that really, I mean, that ends a lot of confusion. Like if you're a Muslim and you think, oh, Allah sent the Quran because everything else had been corrupted. And so he sent the Quran to sort of clean up the mess that everyone created. And yet the Quran keeps telling people to go to their own books and their own revelations. And the Quran sets up these other books as even authoritative over Muhammad. Like in Surah 10, verse 94, when Allah tells Muhammad, hey, if you have doubts about this, go ask the people of the book. Make sure your revelations line up with theirs, and then you'll know it's true. That doesn't make sense if the, if the scriptures of the Jews and Christians have been corrupted. Uh, so the Quran, what the Quran does as far as the arguments it uses and so on, uh, this makes sense in light of what we're seeing here, that the position of the Quran is actually everyone had their revelation. Everyone has to judge by the revelation in their language. That's stupid. It doesn't work because people didn't have revel people didn't have all these revelations that line up with Islam and all these other uh, and all these other languages. And it ignores the fact that new languages develop over time, which is something that that Muhammad doesn't seem to be aware of. He just seems to think that the all the languages in the world are all the languages that there are. So there are problems mm -hmm. like that. But the Looking at what the Quran actually says, it makes sense what the Quran, it makes sense why the Quran is affirming these other uh, prophets and affirming these other revelations. It, it makes it makes sense. It's wrong, but at least it makes sense. Muslims eventually find out why it's wrong. And so they just have to make up a bunch of stuff to make it fit. And that's when they say, ah, all other revelations are corrupt. Hmm. Powerful, right? Not bad, not bad. Why is it a this problem? video, this video is it's not the worst video I've seen in my life. Oh, so I yeah. just... Well, I, I tried, but I tried to make it the worst, but Muslims. Well, here goes. Our Muslim friends tell us that the Quran is the book for all people and that the Quran can only be understood in Arabic. Mm -hmm. But the point of revealing the Quran in Arabic, according to the Quran itself, was for people to have a book in their own language so that they wouldn't have to learn another language to understand the word of Allah. Mm -hmm. The Quran was revealed in Arabic so that a particular group of people, the Arabs in and around Mecca, would have a revelation in their own language so that they could understand it for themselves. According to the Quran, if Arabs didn't have a revelation in their own language, they'd have an excuse on Judgment Day. They'd be able to say, Allah, you can't blame us for not obeying you. You never told us what to do in a language we could understand. Mm -hmm. Allah didn't want them to have an excuse, so he sent them a revelation they could understand in the language they spoke. So ah, we've read the passages. Pretty clear. Allah himself says, how can I make this any clearer? I'm giving mm. Arabs a book in their language because they can't just trust what Jews and Christians are I'm saying giving about them their Arabs books. A book in their language. And I can't expect Arabs to spend years learning Hebrew or Greek so that they can examine the Torah and the gospel for themselves. People need a revelation in their own language. And if they don't have one, they'll have a legitimate excuse on Judgment Day. I can't allow that. So I'm revealing the Quran in Arabic for Arabs. That's what Allah says. But what do our Muslim friends tell us? What do the Dawa guys tell us? They tell us that we all need to live by and judge by the Quran, a book revealed in a language we don't speak and don't understand. They tell us that we either have to just believe what they say about the Quran, or we have to spend years learning a language we don't speak. This is the exact opposite of what Allah says about why he revealed the Quran. Total opposite. This is precisely what Allah says he was trying to mm -hmm. avoid. 
Allah to avoid says it. that he sent messengers to different groups in different languages so mm -hmm. that people could understand his commands in their own languages. Muslims tell us the exact opposite. They tell us that we all have to obey a book in a language we don't understand. If you read the Muslim sources, you'll find over and over again that our Muslim friends completely contradict their own God, their yep. own prophet, and their own book. They do that. Why? Because they have to. No plan B. Allah told them that he sent messengers to every nation and that each group had to judge by the revelations in their language. But Muslims eventually checked the books of other groups and realized that they didn't line up with Islam. The obvious conclusion to draw was that Allah and Muhammad had no clue what they were talking about. But Muslims <laughs> couldn't say that because that would make them apostates, and you know what happens to apostates in Islam. So they started lying. Ah, they missed said, opportunity. Oh, contrary missed to what Allah what? what was the missed, missed opportunity? opportunity. What, should have, should have what should I have said? Should have put Al Dawah in there. What? What happens to apostates, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I could. Yeah, I could have put there. Yeah. 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 Let the like you. <laughs> Clearly says in the Quran, all other scriptures have been corrupted, and everyone now has to judge by the Quran, the book Allah says he revealed so that people wouldn't have to follow a book in a language they don't understand. Mm -hmm. And once they started lying, they couldn't stop, which is why they lied about perfect preservation mm -hmm. and scientific miracles and Muhammad in the Song of Solomon and it's a religion of peace mm -hmm. and Muhammad was a feminist and Aisha was actually 18 Bunch of lies. and so on. I should, have, is, I should have kept that up for like five minutes straight, just just naming the lies that they've told. <laughs> all the time, just kept saying, and this and that and this and that. She, she was a feminist, though. She was, she was a little bit of a feminist. Mm -hmm. There is no plan B. The weird part is that the Dawah guys psychologically condition their followers to only listen to them and not to listen to Allah and Muhammad. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe me, here's an experiment you can perform. Go to your Muslim friends and show them what Allah says about why the Quran was revealed in Arabic. Your Muslim friends won't care even slightly. They'll just go to their favorite Dawah guy who will tell them, no, the Quran is the book for all people in all languages and all other books have been corrupted. And your Muslim friends will believe their favorite Dawah guy mm -hmm. even when he contradicts Allah. Yep. Islam wait, 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 isn't wait, wait, wait. the religion. What? That, that, that can't be true because the Quran explicitly, explicitly says that the Christians and the Jews are deluded and they are wrong because they take their, their, their priests and their rabbis as gods beside Allah, which means that they listen to them instead of listening to what Allah says. So yep. it can't be true that Muslims also uh, listen to the Dawah guys and their scholars. Which, yeah. That would mean that they take their Dawah guys and scholars as gods besides Allah. Stop yeah. lying there. Just so everyone knows, we are totally serious about this, ladies and gentlemen. We point this out that the Quran, the Quran says that when, I mean, you've got the Quran saying that Jews and Christians take their rabbis and monks as lords. When Muhammad was asked, what are you talking about? People don't worship them. He says, yes, they do worship them. They worship them when they allow their religious leaders to contradict Allah and they go with what their religious leaders say instead of what Allah says. He says that's when you're worshiping that person. That's when you're associating that person as a partner with Allah and you're worshiping that person. And yet, that's what almost every Muslim you'll ever run into does. It's, oh, this guy says this, but that wait, that doesn't line up with what Allah says. Yeah, but Ali Dawah said, okay, you're worshiping Ali Dawah then. When <laughs> Muhammad Hijab says that, hey, if you just go with the Quran, you would conclude that you should have sex, you can have sex with a five-year-old. But if you go outside the Quran, you realize you should wait a couple of extra years. Okay. M Muhammad Hijab even says, if you just read the Quran, you would say that it's halal to have sex with a five-year-old. Ah, but you go to the you go to the hadith and you find out, no, that would be haram. Well, then you're worshiping Muhammad and Bukhari and everyone else and Muhammad Hijab because he's the one telling you this. You're worshiping them. You're letting them define what is halal rather than Allah. Okay, but it's, it's only bad if, if uh, Christians and Jews do it, not if Muslims do it. Yeah. Yeah. So the point here is Muslims are worshiping tons of they're worshiping. Uh, they're worshiping Muhammad. They're worshiping 
their scholars over the centuries. They're worshiping their commentators. They're worshiping the Dawa guys. They're worshiping, they're worshiping their imams. They're worshiping everyone who contradicts Allah. When Allah hmm. says that the scriptures of the Jews and Christians are as good as gold and authoritative, and Muslims say, no, 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 don't go to those scriptures. They've been corrupted. And you listen to them rather than Allah, you're worshiping them, according to Allah and Muhammad. You are worshiping those people. Hmm. And they all, and, and what Muslim doesn't do this? Very, very rare to find a Muslim who's just, just listening to Allah. Hmm. Very, very rare. All right, we'll finish this one up. Of submission so we can see for to Allah. Response. It's the religion of submission to compulsive liars. Hmm. If you'd like another example of the Dawah guys saying the exact opposite of what their God and their prophets say, be sure to watch my video, What the Quran Really Says About the Gospel where I go through every single verse in the Quran that so much as mentions the gospel, but somehow can't manage to find a word, not one word, about the gospel being corrupted. All hmm. right, so that continues a little bit where I'm describing that video, but um, notice even the point of that video. When I show a Muslim Allah ordering Christians... When to you show a Muslim Allah? Huh. When I show Muslims the Quran saying that Christians need to judge by the gospel, not by the Quran, and that Jews mm -hmm. need to judge by the Torah, not by the Quran. It's in their heads that, oh, okay, you're pointing that verse out, but there must be something else that says, no, don't judge by those books. Those books have been corrupted. There must be something yeah. else in there. And so what I did in, in that video, I went through every single verse where the Quran so much as mentions the gospel. And I read them in context. I read the context with them. All the Quran ever does is affirm the inspiration, preservation, authority of the gospel. There is no other verse that mentions it. There's, there's no other verse that says, oh yeah, it's been corrupted. And yet they still won't believe it. It's, no, I heard from my favorite Dawah guy that the gospel's been corrupted. Therefore, who cares what Allah says? My goodness, what is this religion? This is They're the ones who always complain about shirk, and they're like the kings of shirk according to their own religion, according to their own religion. They are mushriks. This is amazing stuff, man. Absolutely amazing. All right. So we've but it doesn't seen... count. If you explain this, doesn't count because uh, they only they will only believe it if a Dawah guy says it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. That's... <laughs> we need a Dawah guy to confirm what I'm saying because they won't believe. <laughs> Notice how many verses that I just put on the screen going through these passages that the Dawah guys never never go to. I put them all on the screen. Muslims still won't believe me. They'll still just believe the Dawah guys who hide the, who hide all this stuff from. Them. This is amazing religion, man. The Dawah guys will have to will have to have a confirmation from the Dawah guys that they are just believing anything the Dawah guys are saying. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we are going to watch Farid's video, which is which is uh, very short. I, I kind of didn't want to go through that long video, but I kind of did because again, I think it's an important point, and we want to see if Farid actually responds to the argument. I did want to remind everyone, for those of you who are channel members, there is a video. Don't do it. Don't don't go to it now. Wait till we're done with the live stream. But uh, it's a video that's coming out tomorrow, but it's already available for early access for channel members. So after you watch this, if you're uh, not sleepy and you want some more information, I did post a video, which I had made a, a version of this years ago, but uh, I, I, I made a new one for the current situation. But the, the video is titled Three Quran Verses Every Jew Needs to Know. So I kind of narrowed down what would be the important, most important, if I, if I limited it to three verses, what would be the three most important Quran verses for Jews to know about? I made that, uh, I made that, put that into a video. And so you can check that out later. Everyone else, you can, that video will be public tomorrow. Uh, it sounds like you're enabling, enabling genocide against mm -hmm. Palestinians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Joshua here says, hello, Christian apologist, and hi, not yet a Christian apologist. That's UAP. You're not yet a Christian apologist. So this oppressor-oppressed lens was birthed by Marxism and Leninism, right? I wouldn't say it birthed. I would say they take advantage of it. Um, yeah. You can get this sort of thing anytime you end up with a population that actually cares about other people, because you can have a population that doesn't care about other groups, doesn't care about poor people, doesn't care about that. You can have groups that want to be oppressors, right? You can have groups that totally like get off on oppressing everyone else. And if you go and complain to them, oh, you're oppressor. Yeah, shut up. You're weak. That's why we're oppressing you, right? You can have groups like that. 
And they're sitting around whining, oh, you're oppressing us. They do not care, right? You can have a population that ends up being opposed to oppression and that, that views oppression as wrong and views oppressed groups as victims, right? You can have a group, once you have a society like that, you can then have people who will take advantage uh, mm -hmm. of, that, of that situation. It's like, just notice, you could have a population of people who doesn't care about poor people. They just said, eh, you're poor, so what? what what's that got to do with me? I worked hard, I got piles of money, you got nothing. What do I care? Nothing to do with me, right? In that situation, it, it's hard. It's hard for poor people to take advantage of people's good intentions. The moment you have a population that says, "Hey, we should we should help poor people. It's a good thing to help poor people." You will have poor people who um, who are going to benefit from people willing to being willing to help them. But you would also have people who jump in there and say, "Wait, we could take advantage of this situation." Right? You would have people who ah, they might not even be poor. I, I remember seeing videos like in a. Um, it's about the, uh, you know, the, the sort of panhandlers in New York and so on. It would it would show a, a woman on crutches and she's all covered up and she's completely disabled and can't walk and straighten out. And it would show her spending hours collecting donations and she can't walk. And then it shows her walk around the corner and she takes it off and she, she's just fine. Right. She's taking advantage of people's good intentions. You can only take advantage of people's good intentions if you have people who have good intentions uh, towards you. But notice, once you have a population that is opposed to oppression and that views oppressed people as victims, then you you can, guess what? In that environment, oppressed people who are actually oppressed can step up and say, wait, oppression is wrong, so stop oppressing us. But you will also have people who take advantage of the situation, who take advantage of people's good intentions. And so those people will say, ah, even if, you're not a, even if you're not an oppressed person, you'll use that to say, look at me, I'm oppressed, or to shame uh, to shame other people and so on. And so Marxism just takes advantage of that. It looks around and says, hey, there, 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 there are people around who are concerned, who view oppression as bad, then let's just use that to our advantage and and use it to overthrow the entire system. Those are Smart. my thoughts on it. Smart. Smart, of course, yeah, why wouldn't you? Yeah, just like Mohammed, very perfect business decision. Um, as we talked about yesterday, and mm -hmm. Cardi B and Kim Kardashian. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. Notice AP instantly starts talking about Cardi B. Gosh. <laughs> it's all he thinks about. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, I, that definitely. I'm more stuck on the spelling of Leninism because it's, it's, it's more like the John Lennon. Oh, yeah, financial. John Lennon. Uh, yeah, all this, all this imagine there's no <laughs> religion. <laughs> But yeah, no, I uh, can't say that it's really their invention. But it's just uh, people like to take advantage of it. If you ask, if you ask Nietzsche, he would have told you that uh, that the religious people were the primary um, inventors and pushers of that whole oppressed oppression idea, and that being oppressed is actually being actually the good one versus mm. the other side and all that. But it, it's just it it goes back forever. Yeah. But uh, today, today, the, one of the major winners of the Olympic oppressions, oppression Olympics, yeah, would be our dear brothers of the Islamic faith. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Those poor guys. Very good job. Yeah. Those poor people. Poor people, victims of Islamophobia. Yeah. Now, now uh, guys, again, notice, uh, you could go to China right now. They're, they're, they're putting Uyghur Muslims in concentration camps go up to the chinese who are doing it saying oh but you're islamophobes see how well that works doesn't work well china the only reason china china modifies its behavior at all is because of international condemnation and so on they do take account of that um but as far as just making them feel guilty by oppressing you they do not care they do not care um so yeah Let's see. D. Wood, two ornate handmade bookshelves to organize his vast collection. Christian. AP throws a few puny books in a corner. Atheist. Draw your own <laughs> conclusion. Has a point. Uh, God created Muhammad Hijab perfect. He has a full beard and perfect hairline, but no body hair. When I see you two shirtless and covered in hair, I will know the real truth. Oh. He actually wants us to show off our... <laughs> Show off our bodies like Muhammad did to his followers. Immediately, yeah, I will. The Quran's eloquence is a is a metaphysical matter. 
<laughs> I was going to mention that as something great that, that Farid gave us, actually. It's a metaphysical matter. I even have it on my soundboard here. So See if it works on mine. It doesn't. I have to. No. I have to switch things up. Uh, let's see if the tra if the trajectory continues as it is. If the trajectory if the trajectory continues as it is. If the nation profit ratio is one to one, then Quran is only for an Arab. <laughs> That's how Muhammad Hijab would would say the point that I just made. Yeah, uh, yeah. Joshua here says, I know you guys tell Chloe to make a book of her poetry that's superior over everything in the Quran, Hadith, and all Islamic sources. You would need to be protected from people who can't handle mockery. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we would not want Chloe to put any actual identifying information in that. Hmm. Uh, Nigel says, an Arabian poet named Asma hurt Mo so bad he attacked her. This is, a, this is a poem. You got to read it like a poem, man. An Arabian poet named Asma hurt Maho so bad he attacked her. Her satire was great. She said he was fake and his insanity was a factor. Nice. Nice. This is better than the Quran. Yeah. It is way better than the Quran. Yeah. How is that not a book? 101 <laughs> poems better than the Quran. That's it. <laughs> it should be. It should be a book. It should be. A book. And how easy is that to make? I mean, we 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 already have. If we went through our live streams, we've already got 101 poems better than the Quran. Yeah, I could put my uh, my three year old's diapers in, together, uh, use diapers into a book, and put a hardcover around it and squeeze it, and then put it out there, and it would be better than the Quran. You can make a video titled "Making a Book Better Than the Quran" and do that, and just do that, and that's it. There, it's better than the Quran. <laughs> Uh, no. Alex says, AP, being an atheist, instead of Christmas, do you celebrate secular miss? If so, I wish you a merry secular miss. Yeah, I do. I do, actually. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And happy secular miss to you, too. Yeah. What was the uh, what was the Hollywood on? I mean, what was the holiday on uh, Seinfeld that George Costanza's dad came up with? I don't know. I never Festivus. Watched it was Festivus. They came up with his own arrival to Christmas called Festivus. Noise. I think it was Noise. Festivus. Uh, Joshua said, if, if D1 and AP is not enough to inspire Chloe to share her poetry, I will buy a book of Chloe's poetry. You got it there, Chloe. You already have buyers. Michelle says, serious question. At what point in Muslim history did Islamists ignore Islamicists? Did Islamicists ignore the surahs about revelation in other languages and decide Arabic was the language of Islam. Thanks, D. Wood and AP for the insights. Yeah, it was pretty, it was standard in early Islam. So the first century and a half or so to view the problem with Jews and Christians as them misinterpreting and misrepresenting what their scriptures say, covering up, concealing it. Notice that's part of the reasoning in Islam. If you have to, if in order to, know what the Jewish scriptures say, you and you don't speak the language, you have to listen to what Jews say about it. How do you know if they're telling the truth? How do you know they're not covering up or misrepresenting something? So the, the, the accusations in the Quran, and Muslims will read these same passages about people twisting their scriptures with their tongues and say, you see, that's, they, they, they corrupted their scriptures. Doesn't say that. It says they twist the scriptures with their tongues, right? Mm -hmm. So this is talking about speech. And it's not a yeah. condemnation of the text. Notice, are there Muslims who twist the scriptures with their tongues? Yeah. So that doesn't that doesn't tell you that the text has been corrupted. Um, but th that was standard in early Islam. And just as Islam spread and encountered more and more groups and had more and more interactions with Muslims and Jews, they realized, guys, these, these texts actually do not, it's not about them misrepresenting the texts are not what Muhammad said. That should have been, the takeaway should have been, oh, okay, so Muhammad and Allah didn't know what they were talking about. Can't trust them. Bye-bye, Islam. But you couldn't. You get your head chopped off for that. Therefore, they had to just change their story. And nope, everything's been corrupted except the Quran. But that's what happened. Bye-bye, uh, Islam. Uh, Evidence Base said, we haven't got our messenger in Ghana. Allah, why? Yeah, I've heard. That was a comment over and over again in response to my video. Is, where's, where's, the, where's the revelation here? Where's the revelation there? Where's the revelation there? A modern Muslim is going to say it was all corrupted. That's not the position of the Quran. Yeah. Uh, make up your own language, and Allah sends you a warner. Yeah. Huh, that is, that's a good point. That's a good point. Christianity teaches humanity, while Islam, 
Question mark. Uh, what, what is that one language uh, that, is a, that is a mix of uh, Esperanto? Something like that, yeah. That's the one that's uh, in between um, uh, like French and Spanish, Spanish or something like that? Yeah, yeah. I wonder if there was a, I wonder if a messenger came in Esperanto. No, wait, is that, no, the, the Esperanto is the one that's made to be a simple language, right? Yeah, that is, yeah. What's, yeah. I'm thinking of the language. There's a there's a language that's right it's right in between France and Spain, and they speak this uh, they speak this uh, other hybrid that people most people don't know. Oh, I forgot what it's called. It something anyway. something. Yeah. yeah. So, but anyway, yeah, you can make up a new language language right now, Klingon or something like this. If you had a people who speak Klingon as their native language, then Allah would have to give uh, their revelation in that language. What are the revelations in Klingon? Yeah. Uh, Ronald says, David, why do you always seem to entertain the premise that the Quran is the book from the so-called Allah in debates? I find that claim very laughable at best, and you must always refute it instantly. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I mean, I do it in the video, like the video I just made. Like, okay, this is what Allah is saying, but you, you have to present what the book is saying before you respond to it. I don't know. Yeah, so you, you are just, um, so David is just uh, arguing from, from the perspective, assuming that it was uh, Allah who says this. So according to the to the idea of the Quran, it is the, uh, Allah is the author, Allah is the one who speaks. So when David presents position, he might say, uh, Allah says here, this and that, but that's just to, you know, to, to make it, to make it, to, to give an argument. Yeah, it's don't notice, it's, I mean... I'm talking to Muslims and I'm saying, hey, Muslims, this is what your book says. Your Dawah guy says this. Your God says that. And your God says that if you go with the Dawah guy, you're actually worshiping the Dawah guy. They need to know that. But David, why are you saying that it's from Allah? I'm not saying it's from Allah. But what, then why are you saying it's from Allah? Yeah. Notice, uh, I mean, notice, I could say if I'm reading Huckleberry Finn, I could say Huckleberry Finn says. I'm not saying Huckleberry Finn is, is real. He is real. Uh, McKellen... McKellen Lowell. I thought he was saying Lowell to something, but that's just the name. Uh, James is tired, said he put out another bad response to you today. Oh, that's interesting. So someone pointed out that Fareed posted a second response, uh, which he doesn't like we'll go to. We're going to go through his first response. But um, he said, yeah, we didn't know if it was good or bad. It was a coin flip on whether it's going to be good or bad. But James is tired of saying he put out another bad response. OK, so that might affect whether we actually go to it. Uh, Fareed AP, doesn't make bad responses. No, Please they're all brilliant. Um, AP, did you study the Quran in university? What, in the name of common sense, would you do that? No. Okay. Good, because that would make you <laughs> lame. <laughs> hey, look, <laughs> this channel is now called Daniel Hakikachu's Search History. <laughs> Was she sick? Uh, another poem here. Was she six or was she six? Was she nine? It's a mystery. You can find explicit reenactments on Daniel's search history. <laughs> I wonder if this is all going to be, uh, if this channel is all going to be uh, related to Daniel Hakikichu's search history. That would be where, very messed. Where are the original Jews and Christians with the correct books that converted to Islam while keeping the books God gave them. Also, why would Muslims not incorporate the correct books of God? Uh, yeah, that is that is an issue. Like Muslims will will complain about the Old Testament. Look what the Old Testament says, and we'll say, you know, hey, I'm a I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I believe in the the commands that are directed towards me as part of the covenant that I'm actually under in the new covenant. And they'll say, ah, but you believe that it was revealed, and therefore and it's like, wait a minute, you're supposed to believe that it was revealed. Notice, you buy a Bible. You can buy just a New Testament, but generally, if you buy a Bible, it contains Old and New Testaments. Why? Because we believe it's all revelation from God. Not everything in there is directed towards towards me as a command towards me, uh, but we keep it there. We we put them together we, because those are the revelations that we believe were from God. According to the Quran, they believe in all those too. So you should, as being pointed out here, you should, if you were getting a book, it should have Quran, New Gospel and Torah all in it and say, these are the revelations that we that we still have, something like that. It doesn't really work because again, I mean, the Quran's position is that all nations had their their messengers. And so you should be able to find all these revelations. You yeah, don't, you it's just a problem. All right, one more, and then we'll go through Fareed's video here. Cliff says, a drunken Joe Biden without a teleprompter makes more sense than Allah's message to the Arabs must have been high on Zamzam. That would be a good matter of fact. So you've got that and you've got uh, uh, 
claims about Kamala Harris when she'll just she'll talk for like uh, two minutes, but it's all just incoherent gibberish. Uh, that would be fun. Like, what's better? Kamala Harris or the Quran? Actually, quote the Quran. Stop making fun of Joe Biden. Stop making fun of old people. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that is rude. Notice, guys, you don't hear me making fun of uh, my leaders very much. So it's only when they make it's only when they say something stupid about Islam that I'll actually jump in there and say, hey, eh. All right. Uh, Matthew 622, the leather strap of the anus is the lamp of the body. So if your leather strap of the anus is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. So Thomas just put together what Jesus is saying about the eyes being the lamp of the body. I actually did that on Twitter. I put the 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 eye is the lamp of the body. Uh, Jesus, the eyes are the leather strap of the anus. Muhammad people could compare. <laughs> Nice. Them. All right, let's get it. Let's go through uh, Farid's response, which is uh, much shorter than the one we just you watched. Sure. Here you we sure. go. Farid's powerful response. So we've seen what my argument is, and now we get to see Farid's powerful response, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. So I've just uh, watched a video by David Wood in which he was making arguments against the Quran, and uh, you won't believe how bad it is. Uh, actually, uh, worse than the usual stuff. Worse than uh, usual? This, this That's video, impossible, Farid. I'll Hey, I have to I have to say I'm digging Farid's uh, hair here. What is this? I thought Salafis are more strict on like like their, their their hair and plucking their plucking their mustache and so on and armpits and all that stuff. Farid, come on, man, you gotta you gotta get with the Sunnah, man, the Sunnah. Show you how unreasonable David is and how he's gonna show me how is. unreasonable um, using his own I'm... sources. By the way, let's do this. He's gonna use my own sources. You just said that. And keep in mind, I don't know what he's talking about because I didn't. I didn't finish this uh, video. You didn't uh, finish this, but now you're finished. So. Yeah, I'm finished. Yes, yeah. I will be. By the time this video is finished, D Wood will be finished. Fire intro. <laughs> he actually says fire intro. Why do you use? It? Why do you so use music? That is music. That is technically it's music. Haram. Don't use music. It's haram. It's technically music. And and uh, he'll say no because it's real fire from jihad. <laughs> All right, let's see what he focuses on. This is so I saw what he was focusing on. I was like, did he seriously focus on that? All right. Supposed to believe that the Quran is from God because of its clarity and eloquence, when experts tell us that it's hopelessly unclear and not very good at all. This is where our Muslim friends jump in and tell us. Don't trust the experts. Trust the Dawah guys who say that the Quran is the most amazing book ever. Uh, actually, I, I wouldn't um, tell anyone to ask the Dawah guys or believe the Dawah guys. I'd actually say, yes, go see what the experts say. Um, the problem here is that David is so disconnected from Arabic and from the field of... El That's the point! <laughs> That's the point. How does this work with people who speak other languages, for Farid? All right. Hey, you, you, you know what the funny thing is? Uh, he says you're disconnected from the from what the scholars say. Um, he will as soon as you bring up a scholar who is actually um, who is actually um, you know who who knows the field and who teaches at Harvard, for example, he will then uh, question your scholar and he will say, "No, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's biased. He's this and that." Like um, Shadi Nasser, when I had him on and I talked with him lengthily about the about the Quran. Um, and its quality and he he said you know it, it is it is a it is a special book but the thing is it is not the best book there is it is not it is not inimitable there is no such thing it's simply impossible to to make such a claim and it is it is internally inconsistent but it also sets up basically the whole uh you know language that uh that it that it, that it provides which you uh, must analyze in order to you know um in order to come to the fact that uh, that it is of high quality, that there is simply no way of of verifying that it's of high quality. Um, it is definitely not the best. There is no such criterion. It's nonsense. So th th that's what that guy says. But if I bring that guy up, then Farid will just dismiss him mm -hmm. and say, "No, no, no, I don't like that one." Yep, and that's that's the point, right? Mm -hmm. If we don't, if we don't, if we don't know the language, 
how do we know who to believe? It's just pick and choose, yeah. right? So so guess what? Yeah. What do the dollar guys do? They pick the guy they like who says what they agree with and says, see, look, this guy says what I agree with. So this proves I'm right. What about that guy who says you're wrong? Well, we don't listen to him. Well, guess what? I can do the exact same thing in reverse. I can just say, well, I'm going to listen to this guy, not that dumb guy. That's easy, right? How do we actually get to the evidence? That's the entire problem here. All right. Let's see what he says. Relevant lit literature. He's got no idea who the experts are. That's the point, Farid. How would I know? How How do I know who to trust here, Farid? See, let, let David would admit he doesn't know. Let me get. Let me back up here. David Wood is so... It, Farid, <laughs> how do we know who to believe about the Quran? That's the question. Do I listen to you? Do I listen to this guy who says it's garbage? Or to listen to this guy who says it's awesome? How do I know? Just believe all Allah that. says to avoid that situation, he gives a revelation in every person's own language. Where's the revelation in my language that, that I can use to, to judge? Um, the problem here is that David bit. is so disconnected so this from connected. Arabic and from the field of eloquence and the relevant lit literature, he's got no idea who the experts are. And that's the position the Arabs Real were in. And Allah's response was, well, therefore, I will give a revelation in their language so that they could know. Uh-oh, yeah. where's the revelation of my language, Farid? No, well, it's in Arabic, David, which you don't understand because of your ignorance. That's the point, Farid! My goodness, oh gosh. Okay, but don't, don't, don't you know about the prophet who came to America and who delivered his message? Uh, his name was, uh, was Allah something, the guy from Nation of Islam. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see... Do, do you know that they actually believe that that uh, that Allah came as a person, uh, this, as this black guy, to America, and then disappeared, which proves that he was actually Allah or something like that? Wait, it's, who says some, that? The Nation of Islam. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. believe they. Yeah, some of them believe in like serial incarnations of of Allah and so on. Yeah. Um, serial. I don't know how to respond to colleagues who are attacking me, saying that Israel is committing genocide in Gaza. Any advice? Yes, get a copy, get a copy of Tactics by Greg Kokel. That's normally for apologetics, but it works just as well for discussions like this, where it's the art of asking questions about what people mean. That is the most important thing right now, knowing a little bit of the, knowing a little bit of what actually goes on and asking questions. What do you mean by genocide? What Tell me what you mean by genocide. Normally, no, I mean, normally just getting a definition from the person, if that person has an accurate definition of what the word means, it doesn't fit. The population of the Palestinian territories has exploded for decades. It's been exploding for decades. I don't mean in bombings. I mean, it's just been exploding, the population. That's the opposite of what happens in a genocide. Uh, and if you mean, oh, they're targeting terrorists and taking out terrorists, and these terrorists, because they hide among civilians, there are sometimes civilian casualties. That's ev that's that's any time you're going after terrorists who are hiding among civilians. That happens all the time. You wouldn't say it's genocide. Uh, any advice for uh, people here on what to say, AP? So, uh, yeah, learn to ask questions about what people are claiming, especially if they say things like, from the river to the sea. What do you mean by that? What river? What sea? What are you talking about? Okay, since, since now that you know what river and what sea, are you saying that Israel should be wiped out? Because then it sounds like you're calling for genocide. Um, one one very clear point would be um, the, the the Palestinian side, especially if we're talking about the Muslim side, which happens to be the, the overwhelming majority, has actually consistently preached for genocide. So um, it would be very very interesting to uh, to 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 eventually come to the conclusion, while knowing that that Israel is committing a genocide. Um, the majority Palestinian organizations, especially those that are popular and supported by most people, uh, including but not limited to Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, uh, even Fatah, which is supposed to be the, the, the secular organization, and all the others, they have all at some point, uh, or currently still, uh, preached that they believe the Jews must be eventually annihilated. Hamas has said that forever. Uh, PI, PIJ has said it forever. Uh, 
uh, Fatah still, um, which rules over the West Bank, still preaches in mosques that a day will come when they will kill the Jews and rocks and trees will say there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him, um, while publicly appearing like they're just they're, they're, they're being reasonable and want a two-state solution. Uh, and the other thing to look at, we just talked about this recently, um, just lo look at civilian to combatant casualty ratios. Um, where you can see that according to the United Nations and even according to the very biased uh, United uh, UNRWA, which is uh, which works with Palestinian uh, refugees, even according to them, Israel has consistently had a reasonable civilian to to combatant casualty ratio, uh, which was usually below uh, two to one. And is sometimes around two to one, which is consistent with most um, wars and battles in history, and which shows that they are not excessively going after civilians, but rather making sure to avoid civilian casualties. It, it, it's it's proof that this is happening. The United Nations themselves confirm this, and um, they usually agree with uh, Israel's. Their findings agree with Israel's. Uh, you know, estimates on what the civilian to combatant casualty ratio is. And right now in this war, Israel's estimate is, again, two civilian for one combatant, which is a very normal ratio. If the number is right and there is no reason to doubt it so far, it has been consistent, then there definitely is no genocide taking place. And if there was a genocide, it wouldn't consist of Israel warning the population for two straight weeks and saying, go to these areas, it is safer for you there before beginning to bomb. Yeah. I, so in, in summary, I would say go back and watch our live streams where we're actually going through uh, all this stuff. Um, we've had several. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we, could, we go through we go through all the standard claims. And I have to say, the more we look at it, the more I realize how effective and careful uh, Israel, it doesn't mean, doesn't mean every move is, is, uh, works out perfectly or something like that. Uh, the overall strategy of, Hey, we have to get Hamas. Hamas hides among civilians, dresses like civilians, doesn't allow civilians to leave. They want to maximize civilian casualties. Uh, Israel's strategy of just relentlessly going after Hamas and warning people ahead of time and gathering, going into an area, gathering everyone up and then and then sorting through the people and so on. That I, I don't know what else they can do apart from just saying, we're not going to deal with terrorism. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think they're being pretty accurate. Uh, Benjamin here says, hey, David, do you have a favorite Christian hymn? God bless you and AP. I don't know about a favorite. I mean, I, I generally like the classics, you know. Uh, Amazing Grace, how how great Thou art uh, at the cross, um, Blessed Assurance, those ones, newer ones, usually not terribly crazy. I, I like newer ones that sound like older ones. Um, you know, Bless the Lord, O My Soul, and stuff like that. I like new, I like newer ones. And then for some reason, there are a couple that I like. I didn't go to church when I was young, except when I was visiting my grandma or my aunt, and they would make me go to church, and I hated it. It was so boring. But you there see, were, David would admit he hated church. There were there were two hymns that they sang that I actually didn't hate, and uh, and then I I didn't go to church for years, and then I heard them again after I became a Christian. It, it reminded me of like when I was when I was a kid, and it would be the the not miserable part of a church service, and I was like, oh, uh, I like those. But one was, uh, I don't even know if I can remember them, but one is, uh, they made us, they made a song out of, out of Bible verses. So one was, they would just sing Christ, our Passover is sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. And they would just keep reciting that over and over again. I didn't know it was a Bible verse until I read the Bible. I was like, whoa, that Bible verse is from that, is from that song, from that song that we used to, <laughs> we used to sing. And, uh, then there was also one where. Uh, gosh, they took some verses from the Sermon on the Mount and made a song out of it. I would have to think about it, but yeah, um, it was pretty cool. What is that song? It's been a while since I heard it. Uh, let's see. Oh, here we have more epic points. Sir Whitemeat says, D. Wood makes a great point about oppression. Christian, AP, ooh, Cardi B, Zabuba, atheist, draw your own <laughs> conclusions. 
Oh, boy. I had no idea Muhammad was so white and nerdy. Yep. Muhammad was so white and nerdy. He was so white and nerdy. Yeah, indeed. Uh, let's see. Any chance that dehydrating oneself for a month in the desert could have a negative effect on one's cognition? Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, generally fasting. I, I don't know about. I don't know about dehydrating. I would think that that would be a problem. Generally fasting, you actually think more clearly. It improves your cognition. Uh, I don't know about. De I don't know about being dehydrated. But anyway, let's get back to uh, Farid here because he, he sure. just he just said I'm a I'm a total moron and I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm completely ignorant and he's going to use my own sources to destroy me. He's going to destroy me. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, Farid. Um and I'm, I'm willing to help you, David. Uh, awesome. Because hey. I actually have a list of experts. He said he's willing to help. How many times have we invited him to join us live and explain things to us? Like a thousand? Yeah. Okay. Fareed, join us live. We'll sit here. We'll sit here and listen. I mean, we'll have questions and objections for you and stuff. But you're welcome to join us. Don't hide behind. But you're not worth responding to. All you do is respond to us. We're just offering the invitation to do it on our channels. But notice, we'll sit here and go through your videos. Let's go. Um, in Arabic eloquence, old and contemporary, Muslim and non-Muslim, that have praised the Qur'an. And yes, I even have examples of uh, Christian Arabs who have referred to the Qur'an as miraculous. Uh, very briefly, here's an example of French Orientalist Mardre, who translated much of the Qur'an as well as the uh, Thousand and One Nights into French. And he completely agrees that the Qur'an is both magnificent and divine in its style. Uh, but I'll be frank, uh, I don't know too much about Magdro, and I'm not going to be calling him an expert simply because... Uh, he, he, he doesn't get the point. Give us his... Notice, notice. And uh, again, I don't, I don't know what he's going to do after this, so maybe, maybe he cleans this up. But based on what he's doing right there, he is completely missing the point. Yeah. What, did, what did he just do? Oh, this guy says, okay... One, what are his criteria? You said he he says it's a divine style. Tell us what a divine style is. Tell us what that guy means. Explain what he means by a divine style. Then see, then we'll see if we actually think those are good. This man has good criteria of what a divine. I have no idea what a divine style is. I have no idea how you say, oh, this style is divine. That other style over there, not divine. I have no idea how you're distinguishing between those two. So I need to see the criteria. Then we'd have to see if we agree with the criteria. We think, well, that, oh, actually good point. Now we know what this person means by divine style. And then we'd have to see whether the Quran is actually this divine style meets these criteria, which we have assessed are actual evidence of a divine origin. What do Muslims do? This guy says it. That's the problem for rate. Yes, this guy says, okay, this guy over here says it's garbage. You say, ah, but there are Arab, okay. Uh, every Arab Christian I know says the Quran is garbage. Why should we pick, why Why do we take your word for it? Oh, but I know, that, now maybe he's going to go through them. I know Arab Christians who say the Quran is, about, what is their, what are, what are their criteria? Who are they? Why should we take them, why should we take them seriously and not the people who say it's garbage? That's what we're asking. And you're just doing what we pointed out as the problem. Look, David Wood doesn't even know what a divine style is. The divine um, style. What, what's also funny is that he seriously, as proof, he just brought up um, a guy that he doesn't even know anything about. That's yeah. very interesting. Yeah, he, which he looked it up and he saw it on some dumb website. That's the point, Fareed. <laughs> We're looking at your guy's methodology. Let's go to a bunch of people. Oh, this one said something good about the Quran. You see, this is the proof. Okay, what about all the other guys who said it's a bunch of uh, idiotic nonsense? What about them? They are lying. Well, they're obviously wrong. What is this, Fareed? This is circular. You're just being circular. You're assuming that the Quran is great, then going through. Oh, everyone who says the Quran is great is telling the truth. Everyone who's not is ignorant or lying. Ha ha. You could do that with anything, Fareed. That's what we're pointing out. But the main thing I'm pointing out is that the method you're using completely contradicts the Quran. It completely contradicts the Quran. You're just saying, well, take this guy's word for it. That's what the, the Allah says in the Quran. That's why he's given the Quran to avoid this situation. So you're doing exactly what Allah says he was trying to avoid. That was the entire point of my video. You, you, you beat that point to death, David. I beat uh, the point to death. If you do it again, it will be, it will not be bearable any longer. Unfortunately, Farid will not understand it. 
but I think many others will will, and I'm not sure if his fans will understand it, but I think many others will. So, yeah. And so powerful. All right. Again, I do not know where he's going. Let's see what he gets to. He has a view that is in line with mine. And unfortunately, that seems to be David's criteria. Um, if he can use your position, then that person, whoever he is, is definitely an expert. No. <laughs> that, is not, that is not. <laughs> he just said he just said what every Dawa guy does. And he says, and that's what David does. No. My position is. You've got some guys saying the Quran is wonderful. You've got other guys saying the Quran is garbage. How am I supposed to know? Allah revealed it. Allah revealed it in a language I do not understand. So what am I supposed to do here? Oh, I'm supposed to just pick the guys you say are right. What am I doing? What would? I, why would I do that? Why? What, what possible basis could I have for doing that other than you saying it? So that's that's one. Two. That's the opposite of what Allah says in the Quran. Allah says he gives everyone a, lang a revelation in their language, sends them a messenger, a warner in their language so that they can know in their language that this is the word of Allah. That's what your God, Fareed, that's what your God says in this book. If that's not what he meant, if he says all of this, but he actually meant, oh, everyone has to judge in Arabic, a language they don't understand, but just mindlessly accept what the Dawah guys say. If that's what Allah meant, then the Quran is not clear. It is the least clear book ever, period. How are you not getting this? This seems quite simple to me. Does everyone else get it? Does everyone else who's watching get this? I feel like this is simple. I Everybody got it after the 50th time. Farid, unfortunately, doesn't, but... We don't have to do that again. <laughs> All right. All right. Back to Fareed. <laughs> but yeah, let's see what uh, David's experts have to say. The Arabic scholar Gert Puin, for instance, says this. The Quran claims for itself that it is mubin or clear. But if you look at it, you will notice that every fifth sentence or so simply doesn't make sense. Many Muslims and Orientalists will tell you otherwise, of course, but the fact is that a fifth of the Quranic text is just incomprehensible. This is what has caused the traditional anxiety regarding translation. If the Quran is not comprehensible, if it can't even be understood in Arabic, then it's not translatable. People fear that. And since the Quran claims repeatedly to be clear, but obviously is not, as even speakers of Arabic will tell you, there is a contradiction. So let's take a look at this part right here. And Orientalists, meaning there are Orientalists that disagree with Puin's assessment in regards to the Quran. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with these Orientalists? Were they lying about the Quran? I mean... Poen is a scholar of this the of Orientalist studies on on the so he he he's in this category right. I don't think Fareed understands what Poen is actually getting at here. Uh, it's yep. so someone like Poen. The 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 point of people who are going in this direction is that the the earliest the earliest Qurans would have been written without all the little uh, dots and so on that clarify what words are being used. And it, the Quran uses words that actually we don't know what they meant. What happens, and here, here for Fareed to understand, what happened is later Muslims just said, this means this. This means, this word means this, when actually they don't know. They're, they're, they're coming up with something based on their own, their own speculations. But then the Muslim community will say, okay, that's what so-and-so said it meant, therefore that's what it means. And then you get down to the modern period and people think, ah, we know what this stuff means. And Garrett, Garrett Puin's, uh, one of his points, he's making several, but one of his points is you don't actually know what that meant. You know what this guy said it meant. And now everyone thinks that's what it meant because this guy came up with a meaning for it centuries ago. And now everyone, even the Orientalists think, oh, okay, we know what this verse means when you don't actually know what it means. You don't actually. You, the, the, so later Muslim, Later Muslim commentators came up with meanings for these things. And they and now modern Muslims think, oh, we understand this, and you don't understand it. It's what someone came up with at some point in the past. And he's saying, you don't actually know. It's incomprehensible. And he's saying, even the Orientalists, even, even certain Orientalists fell for this, thinking, oh, okay, we know what this means. Why? Because they're reading through the lens of later Muslim commentators. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's good. All right. That's good. King Sens, are they delusional? Well, yes. maybe Puen is a Rebbe. 
because I can't think of a good reason for Orientalists to claim that the Quran makes sense apart from. But even, even if what? what did you just say? Even if we ignore everything that that uh, that Farid is pointing out here, he still doesn't get it. Ah, but these Orientalists say this, right? Okay, so these Orientalists say this. These Oriental these Orientalists say it's wonderful. These Orientalists say it's garbage. These Orientalists say, hey, we know what this means. These Orientalists say we don't know what it means. Who do we listen to? Who do we listen to? The Quran says it's being revealed so that people aren't in this position. People have it in their own language. We're asking if that's why the Quran is revealed, why are we in this position that the Quran says that it was sent to avoid? Everything, everything Farid is saying right now is the opposite of what Allah says. My goodness, I don't know. I don't know how to make it any more clear. Please, please don't explain it ever again, dude. I will never explain this again, except I will probably explain it seven more times before the no, end of this lecture. No, no, no. <laughs> Making sense? Are they delusional? Well, maybe Puen is a Rebbe, because I can't think of a good reason. L listen to what he just said. Are these Orientalists who say that it does make sense? Are they delusional? Or maybe, maybe Puen is stupid. Right. <laughs> Those are all possible if we don't know who's right. If we don't know what the Quran actually says and how eloquent it actually is, how do we know to go with this guy or that guy? This is the problem. He could, Puan could be a complete idiot. We don't know. That Orientalist could be completely right. We don't know. Or that Orientalist could be an idiot and Puan could be right. We don't know. This is what, uh, this is what Allah says. This is what Allah has, according to you, Allah put us in this, in the position. Put us in this position of we don't know. And according David, to David, Allah himself, David, 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 this David, is what serious. he's trying to please, avoid. I'm serious. Please don't explain it ever It's again. a it rule. It's it a rule, AP. Now. AP, it's just a rule. <laughs> when you're explaining it for the Dawah guys, you have to explain it 487 times before you can even hope that they get the point. If he right. doesn't get it after now, there is simply no hope. If he didn't get it after the second time, there is no further hope. I don't think I feel, it's I, necessary to I, ever explain it again. I feel like Fareed <laughs> could watch this entire video. He could watch, yeah. I, I mean, our the, the original video and this entire live stream. He'll watch it. He'll watch me explaining it 75 different times in this live stream alone even though the video was crystal clear and he will he will tell his followers. And so David is saying that Gerd Poen is the only one who's correct in all of this and that we should just go with Gerd Poen. But David is wrong. <laughs> and he would not get anything I'm saying. All right. Let's see. For That's Orientalists bad. to claim that the Quran makes sense apart from it actually making sense. So why can't someone say something like, well, yeah, well, Poen, Wahid, Ghibi. You can say um, that. Eh? You can so say that. Look at this, folks. I have no idea what is going on here. So I'm going to say that this is incomprehensible. But instead of the fault being with me, let's pretend that I am an expert. And this has absolutely oh no meaning. The Iranian scholar Ali Dashti, in his book 23 Years, adds, The Quran contains sentences which are incomplete and not fully intelligible without the aid of commentaries. Foreign words, unfamiliar Arabic words, and words used with other than the normal meaning. Adjectives and verbs inflected without observance of the concords of gender and number. Illogically and ungrammatically applied pronouns which sometimes have no referent. And predicates which in rhymed passages are often remote from the subjects. These and other such aberrations in the language have given scope to critics who deny the Quran's eloquence. Hey, AP, wasn't it funny? Because this is exactly what, what I thought when I was made it that they would focus on instead of the actual yeah. point. When I specifically said this is just to, to illustrate and set up the problem. That's what always happens. <laughs> it's, That's mean, what it's, always happens. It's, it's awesome. So... For, for, for Reed, I have to say something here. Like we, we said some very nice things about you during this live stream, um, and, and it wasn't even a setup. We have probably actually meant those things. But um, I said before, and unfortunately, when when someone says this, it sounds really bad, and it sounds very insulting and very condescending uh, and very arrogant. I know. I know. I am aware. But there simply is no other way of saying this because you keep thinking that you're actually making fantastic points and that we're just ignoring it or whatever, whatever, whatever you're thinking. But um, 
I said before that you are possibly one of the dumbest Muslim apologists in the scene. And I must say, after this presentation, I can only confirm this once again. Look, no disrespect. It is not your fault. No disrespect. Really, you're dumb. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> it's really not your fault. I think you're very knowledgeable. You, you read a lot of things. You obviously studied Islam a lot. And I respect that. Look, I admit here that I respect your knowledge and I respect your studies and I respect the fact that you have that you have a lot to say. But I sincerely think that you are not very smart, not very intelligent. And you know what the problem about, about that is? Look, I, I will not say, for example, that Mohammed Hijab is not very intelligent. That guy is intelligent. He's just a scumbag. But for you, you are you are probably a good guy and you are knowledgeable, but you are not intelligent. And, and the problem with that is when you then make cocky videos like these, and we look at them and we listen to them, it is incredibly painful for those who are um, further advanced, whom you might perceive as, uh, you know, stupid or ignorant, because you don't understand their world. So I'm sorry to put it this way. And I know it sounds very bad, but this is the problem. So I know. Well, that was pretty rude. So uh, AP has just <laughs> resorted to insulting Fareed because he cannot refute Fareed's powerful <laughs> arguments. What are you laughing at? What are you laughing? Why are you stuttering? Why are you stuttering laughing? Hmm? Uh, a <laughs> couple, couple comments here. Um, you should do a stream where you... You should do a stream where you and Guy with no bookshelf... Take calls from our friends from our favorite religion. Also, thank you for Nabil. Yeah, I wouldn't mind doing a kind of a, a kind of call in show. There is this this ongoing problem. Thaddeus has it that as soon as he says uh, uh, everyone's welcome to uh, join in the stream, Muslims go in there and start posting porn pictures. To be, the goal is to derail it. Now, notice it's just amazing. Hey guys, here you can. And some Muslim, to be fair, some Muslim too actually like call in and have discussions and so on. But it's even difficult to do that because as soon as you put them live, they start just, ah, porn, 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 porn. And it's like gay porn, gay porn, gay porn. <laughs> it's like, what in the world? Uh, how do you expect, ooh, this is a good question. How do you expect apostasy rates to grow over the next decade? I expect it to snowball. They call it an avalanche for a reason. We pointed out before, you go back like 20 years, it was still a common myth that no one leaves Islam even though there were people leaving Islam, but it was just, there were, there were, there were so few people who left Islam and were making it public that Muslims were still able to say, no one leaves Islam. And if you say, if you were a Muslim who left Islam, they would say, nope, you were actually always a, a, a Christian or something like that. And you're pretending to convert. Now it's, there are so many ex-Muslims that we know who are actually ex-Muslims that they can't cover it up. And they're the ones, they're the ones pointing out uh, how many people are leaving Islam in the U.S. and around the world. And, you know, between five and 10 percent of people who are counted Muslims in Muslim countries are actually closet atheists. Um, 24 percent was the statistic years ago. I've seen higher numbers since then. But 24% uh, of Muslim youth as of like six or seven years ago were leaving Islam. You've got, uh, there was a poll that showed that about 40%, only about 40% of people who are supposedly Muslims in, in Iran are actually Muslims. So, so Iran is theoretically in a Muslim minority country now because of all the apostasy. And that's all accelerating. But basically what you had, ladies and gentlemen, was for centuries, Muslim leaders were able to keep their people isolated, insulated from hearing any criticisms of Muhammad and from hearing a serious presentation of any alternative to Islam. And now all of a sudden, you've got all these Muslims who moved to the West, so they are now uh, no longer completely insulated. Uh, and we have the internet, so we can talk to Muslims in Pakistan and Saudi Arabia and so on via the internet. So now... Muslim leaders are no longer able to keep their people in a bubble. And Islam is collapsing because of it. But I, notice that just started. That just started since we were doing stuff. And it looks like that's going to accelerate. 
You've got the uh, latest Dawa plan, which is uh, put out by Ali Dawa. That okay, all the arguments, yeah, there's garbage, there's total nonsense, but people's gonna convert because of our intolerance. I'm not exaggerating. That is exactly his argument now. That yeah, yeah. all our arguments are garbage. They don't work, but people will convert because they're so sick of tolerance that they're going to want intolerance and they're going to come to Islam. And good luck with that. Uh, but notice that's the, that's the state of desperation they are in. People are going to convert just because Islam is intolerant. And then the other thing they're doing is they're clinging to any random social media influencer who becomes a Muslim. And it doesn't matter that like they'll view Sneeko and Andrew Tate as the saviors of their religion. Um, this is absolutely pathetic, but I think they're going to go in that direction. They're going to flex more. They're going to think that more, they need to be more aggressive and more intolerant. And this is going to impress everyone. And it will impress some people. There are people who will, who are so sick of, uh, overblown tolerance that they're going to, uh, they're, they're going to, oh gosh, let's just get away from all this nonsense and convert to Islam. There will be people like that. It is not a good long-term strategy. It's going to collapse. Um, what do you think, AP? How do you think apostasy rates? What do you think is going to happen with apostasy rates? I would say, uh, I would refer to Sheikh Ibudi. He said that nobody ever, nobody leaves Islam because those who leave Islam were never Muslims to begin with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good point. And that's, I would, I would stick with that. Um, or I would simply say that, uh, what what a policy prophet always says is that it will end within the next 100 to 200 years just uh, depending I think, on your school you can take either of those i think we're going to get in the very near future once this latest dawa tactic crumbles which again is just a we'll we'll cling to sneeko we'll cling to some random <laughs> influencer i think that's going to collapse and they've got no, they've got nowhere else to go. There's nothing else because it's all been a lie. All their arguments have been lies. People now finding finding out that they're all lies. And so I think it's going to collapse on TikTok. <laughs> Once to, like TikTok is their last stronghold of Dawa. I think that's about to collapse too. Imagine, imagine like uh, anyone you ask in the in the West generally who talks about these, uh, you know, these these these, um, I don't know intellectual matters uh regards tiktok as like the lowest lowest place uh in terms of you know um yeah like the, garbage the like intellectual arguments i guess yeah yeah I, i'm just trying to be very nice here but uh <laughs> but 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 muslims are really looking at tiktok right now like that that is that is where muslims put their hope in the lowest place in the intellectual arena mm -hmm. that's just that that says everything yeah Indeed. Catterson says, I created my own language. Where's my messenger? That is a good question for Fareed. Yeah. Where? Uh, Peace be upon me says, hi, David, AP. New evidence is suggested Muhammad was from Iraq or Hira. Uh, also, any thoughts on Christopher? Uh, I think it's Christoph. Is it Christopher? It's Christoph. Christoph Luxembourg. Uh, Christoph Luxembourg, uh, Aramaic Quran origin. Yeah, so Luxembourg is from the uh, revisionist school, which sort of uh, rejects the standard Islamic narrative about the origins of Islam. Um, but I've never, I've never really studied, uh, I've never really studied the revisionist school. So I, I've pretty much always just gone with the the standard Islamic history of events, and you, have, you of course, have tons of people questioning uh that story whereas i just kind of go with the story and then raise uh objections based on that story but yeah there are people who have varying levels of skepticism about the early history of islam period and where muhammad is coming up with this stuff notice you can you can still grant the basic timeline and think that muhammad is stealing all this stuff from other sources it's clear that muhammad's plagiarizing uh, the question is, where is he getting all this stuff? And yes, yeah, some people would say he's getting this from uh, actually earlier texts. Any thoughts on this AP? We should get someone who's like a representative of this line of thought on here to break down this position. Um, Possibly. I'm not entirely, um, I'm not familiar enough to, to precisely critique uh, the whole Aramaic Quran origin story. Um, I, I do know about, um, what's what's their names? What are their names? Those those guys with with uh, with Petra as the origin and all that, um, I, I I know about that part and I know about some of the the reasoning that they use to uh, doubt 
that the whole story took place in Mecca, for example, and all that. But uh, I, I don't know. I just I find their reasoning generally not very strong for different reasons. Um, and I think I don't really have any reason to doubt the 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 idea that Muhammad was you know that that Muhammad was actually as Muslims present it or as Islam presents it uh, there in the in this insignificant little desert of, of Mecca and that he did indeed recite certain things which people then wrote down and uh, those things were just not very not very good <laughs> and, well, and that he was uh, mentally, mentally unwell I don't know. how can you say they're not good when Farid says there's this French guy who says otherwise AP bam um, by the way, I don't know much about this French guy, but uh, yeah. Yeah, but he agrees with me, and therefore I'll agree with him, even though I'm about to accuse David of just agreeing with the people who agree with him. Ha ha. Eat a full Quran, please. Uh, no. There would have to be a very good reason. I might feed an entire Quran to an animal or something, but... Uh, uh, I will do it. How do we get the next generation uh, into apologetics? Our favorite religion seems to have a huge percentage of them. They seem to have more influencers to lead the next generation. Yeah, that, I mean, they've, had, they've been very active in running around in panic mode. Um, ah, the avalanche of apostasy. This can only stop if we really get on board. So they have, uh, they have but they focus on, you know, TikTok and so on. So yeah, we do need to get people interested in responding to all that stuff and interested in apologetics. Um, I mean, it is, it is very good. Uh, one of the main figures in Islam right now is um, a literal, actual self-professed pimp who mm -hmm. is currently uh, who is awaiting trial for uh, sex trafficking and who has also uh, additional charges underway, including for organized crime, uh, corruption, uh, and trafficking of minors. And then uh, the other influencer is some guy who was um, banned from YouTube after he uh, referenced a, a, a female YouTuber and basically implied, um, you know, raping her and um, insulting her in, in different ways and is also constantly spends his time sleeping around and just uh, treating women like trash. Uh, and then we also have a bunch of people on on TikTok who don't know anything about anything, and we just jump on the light, on the latest trend. So I don't think that there is much to, you know, be concerned about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So basically, they're getting desperate. Uh, it's like a it's like a person who's who's drowning, right? It's like a person who's drowning and just grabbing onto anything as a lifeline, and that's what it's like right now. And they're in, they're panicking because of the avalanche of apostasy. And they're clinging to anything, hoping that will save them. And I don't think it's going to work. I think it's going to collapse. Yeah. yeah. Hey, David, I have a little gift for you. You Sweet. ever heard of the alleged expert that says that the Quran is beautiful and unique and that there was no precedent for it in the earlier literature of the ancient Arabs? It's a fusion from the tongue of an illiterate man with no education, let alone literary training, is a phenomenon which, in this respect, can justifiably be referred to as a miracle, or be described as a miracle. He also praises some specific chapters like Surat al-Balad as a shining example of prophetic eloquence. And he guesses who this is referring to. Yes, it's Ali Dashti, your own source, the person that you refer to as an expert. Just to be clear, Ali Dishti does not believe that the Qur'an in itself is a miracle of eloquence. However, these statements clearly conflict with what David is trying to present to his audience. So, he doesn't get the point. He doesn't get it. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> this, this point, it's actually different because we've been asking, okay, why should I listen to this guy versus this guy? Okay, when Ali Dashti, the Iranian, says something nice about the Quran, and when he says that it's a, uh, it's horrible, it's it's pretty horrible. Which Ali Dashti do we go with, right? Do, do we say, hey, when he's saying that it's garbage, we agree with him there, and over here he's just, you know, he's he's just trying to say some nice things because he doesn't want to get executed, or do we say that no? Right over here, he's that's when he's telling the truth when he says it's really awesome, and over here he's just trying to say some things for you know for for non-Muslims or something like that. What do you do? They 
the only way we can know is if we understood it in the language, which is what Allah says he was revealing the Quran for so that everyone would have a, a revelation in their own language. But he said he sent him to everyone. How are you not getting this? I don't know. Sorry, I had to annoy you again, AP, but this one's actually different. But notice, I mean, Fareed's method would be, okay, so we'll read all this stuff. Oh, he's saying over here it's garbage, but over here he says it's great. You see, he gives it the thumbs up. My goodness, man. <laughs> okay, all right, back to Fareed. Do you agree, uh, David? Do you believe that Ali Deshti's assessment is correct? He really, he really thinks I'm going. Look, nothing to do with the point for you. Here's, here's what Ali Dashti said. Therefore, that's what I'm going with. No. Oh um, but this is this I mean, is confirmation that he didn't get it at all. Yeah. This is the confirmation that he didn't understand it at all. That's crazy. And I thought in that video that I was going with overkill by by explaining the point over and over and over and over again and quoting. Passage after passage after passage after passage. Jeez, this is so stupid. Personally, no, by the way. Um, but do you agree with his claims? Is he only an expert when it suits you? Notice, we're supposed to convert to Islam because of the supernatural eloquence of the Quran. But how are we supposed to know that the Quran is supernaturally eloquent when we don't speak Arabic? What our Muslim friends are really telling us is this. We either need to trust what the Dawah guys say about the Quran without understanding the evidence for ourselves, or we need to spend years studying classical Arabic so that we can perhaps find the evidence for ourselves someday. If, if he actually understood that, that's the point. How is, okay, maybe he's actually going to respond to it here. Because now he actually posted the point. This guy says this, this guy says that, this guy says this, this guy says that. Everyone's telling us something about how wonderful the Quran is. Who do we listen to? We don't speak the language. You know what? I'm, I'm making a prediction here, and I'm going to assume that he will he will be, uh, he will will be say something along the lines of um, that you are claiming we should just trust the Dawah guys, but no, you know, they're scholars. He will, get, again, misunderstand the point and be stuck with it. Please, please, Farid, prove me wrong, please. Please. Yeah, He's so let's to. get past all this da'wah guy stuff. Uh, we've agreed that we're only going to be using uh, experts when it comes to this talk. Oh, not the point. Oh. Okay, but let's let's see what, what let's see what he's going to say. Let's see what he's going to say. Quick. So you have two options when it comes to looking into the claims of the Quran being a miracle, and yes, the second one is definitely a lot harder. But you see, the thing is that a pre. So the second one, if he's talking about the point I just made, the second one, spending years learning Arabic, that would be hard. That would be the harder one, rather than just going with what someone says. But if you just go with someone, what someone says, who do you go with? That's the question. Let's go. These physical miracles are not even accessible to you. You've never seen the sea split, and you never will. And you've never seen the raising of the dead, and you never How will. How do you know? Islam How provides you, know? you with a miracle. He says, I'll never see the raising of the dead. What about the resurrection, Fareed? Fareed denies the resurrection. Pow. <laughs> well, that you can actually access. However, again, it's not the easiest thing to do in the world, and you're going to have to spend a good amount of time studying the material. But the, again, the Arabs could have done that. Allah oh, could have God. said the Arabs need to do that. He didn't. He said, no, it's too hard. You needed something in your own language. Oh, my goodness. This guy. And, and he's saying, yes, it will be hard, but you can do it. Then you have option one, which is relying on the statements of the experts in the field. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, but why should I believe in these testimonies? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, aren't you already believing in the testimonies of those that spoke about the splitting of the sea and those that spoke about the raising of the dead? If you believe huh? those testimonies, then why are you rejecting the testimonies of those that have oh claimed God. the Quran is a because what David what David is saying is that your book is setting the standard with which then the idea that the Quran is the final book for all the humans in the world directly contradicts. So what David would eventually trusts or doesn't trust has no relevance. I repeat, no relevance at all to the point. For it. Oh my God. This, Farid, <laughs> the entire video <laughs> is about you guys.
saying something, oh, saying that Islam and the Quran and Muhammad are something completely different from what the Quran says they are. Allah in the Quran says, this is what the Quran is. This is why it was revealed. This is why Muhammad was sent. And you guys say something completely different while telling us that this book is completely clear. It's incoherent. It doesn't make sense. If what you guys are saying is true, then the Quran most certainly is not clear because the Quran is saying the opposite of what you guys say. I don't know what to do. Uh, <laughs> of eloquence. In most cases, the claims of these uh, classical or ancient physical miracles aren't even by eyewitnesses. They're by anonymous authors or even um, late authors that are allegedly quoting eyewitnesses. So folks, here's what I'm offering. The Quran is a text that came with a challenge to produce something like it. The Arab pagans of the time, instead of coming with something like it, instead of challenging the Quran, what they did was they actually converted to Islam. They changed their religion. They stopped believing hey, in the Yeah, Muslim. no, no, no. Wait a minute. So Al Nadir, <laughs> Al Nadir, guy from a uh, guy that we read about in Muslim sources, Muhammad would come up with his uh, revelation and say, "I've got a, I've got a revelation," and Al Nadir would get up behind him and then say, "I could, do, I could do better than that," and he would recite his own poetry. And then he would challenge the Muslims. Tell me any way that Muhammad's is better than mine. Tell me, tell, give me an example. That was during Muhammad's time. What did they, how did Muslims respond? They killed him. They killed him. As soon as they got the chance, they killed him. Um, the vast majority of the Arabs did not accept Islam based on Muhammad's excellent poetry. They didn't. Muhammad preached, oh, the Quran is so wonderful, for 12 years in Mecca. How many followers did he have? Not a lot. It wasn't until the message changed to, hey, join me, fight for me, and we'll go and take everyone else's stuff. And we'll take their wives and their daughters as our sex slaves. And oh, by the way, if you get killed while you're fighting for me, you go to a, you go to a, a paradise where you'll spend eternity deflowering virgins, which is what oh. my target, my target, guess what? Those of you who are attracted to that sort of thing, you're my target audience. That and so you had people like you had idea. you had people who who were drawn to that and everyone who wasn't drawn to that, in other words the people who weren't impressed by either by either the Quran's eloquence or by uh spending eternity deflowering virgins, those people had to be conquered. That's how Islam spread. Well then, oh, but they just heard it and they were but, but so notice. Notice Farid because we can just we can just back this all the way up to that time, if the Quran is so amazing that someone understanding it in Arabic will acknowledge that it is so eloquent it has to be from God, why did the vast majority of Muhammad's listeners think that it was a joke and make fun of it instead? Very few people thought that was a good argument. So notice, if you just went with numbers, okay, the vast majority of people did not think that was a good argument. They thought that was a stupid argument. And those were people who spoke it who spoke the language. They thought it was a joke. So who do I listen to? Do I go with this guy who thought it was really good during Muhammad's time or this guy over here, al Nader, who thought that the Quran was a complete joke? According to the Quran, when Muhammad's revealing his revelations, people keep standing up going, wait, we know where you got that from. You got it from that guy. You heard this from this dude over here. Why are you, plagiar why are you plagiarizing this stuff? We've heard this stuff before. Do I listen to them? Or do I listen to this other guy who says, wow, it's so amazing. How do I know who's right, Farid? My goodness, man. My goodness. Um, I'm, tr I'm trying to look something up. I'm, I, I'm kind of, it feels like, I, I don't really know when I last looked at that. I thought it was in, in, in Ibn Asak about uh, the Battle of Badr. But, um, what, were they killed? Uh, were they killed, Al Nadir? No, no, no. Uh, where, where it mentions that, um, that after this victory, the people realized that the Muslims are now um, actually a power uh, and, and they were intimidated and felt like uh, converting to Islam. See, so, they uh, were intimidated. Yeah, so um, the, 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 yeah. the explanation there is basically that, that Islam, through, um, yes. through intimidation, 
starts getting attention and uh, you know mm-hmm. pulling people into yeah. the faith. Yeah, there are people who ah look, this is really growing and this is really doing well. Let's jump on this bandwagon. Yeah, you still have those kinds of people today. Um, Andrew Tate. In other words, it was the same reasoning of Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate said he was it's for him it's like betting on the stock market. I think Islam will do well because Islam is the only religion that will kill everyone else who disagrees with it. And notice you could be on the same thing back then. Hey, if I'm betting on the stock market, look how fast this Muhammad stuff is growing. And they're actually all of a sudden, they came out of nowhere and and a little over a decade later, they're able to they're able to fight a war. Yeah. Gotta jump on board with that stuff. Hmm? Do you remember what I'm talking about? Do you have by by any uh chance know what i'm mentioning and where i where that was i can think of several things that are along those along those lines of people being impressed by islam and islam uh, starting to there was specifically in in the biography I, i'm pretty sure it wasn't ibn sark but i'm looking at the battle of, uh, of um, I, don't, I don't know where it is but it, it specifically points out that after this victory uh the people were were intimidated and depressed uh and realize that Islam is, uh, you know, basically that, that that the Muslims are strong, and they began approaching it or considering it or something like that. Anyway, if I find it, I will, I will get back to it. No, let's just divert the entire show, and while you dig through Ibn Ishaq and read the entire thing over again, <laughs> looking for that one passage. My goodness! All right, I don't know who's worse, you or Farid. All right, let's let Farid wrap this up. They believe it. They adopted a whole new way of life. Now, folks like David might say something like, oh, yeah, well, those people, those poets, they convert to Islam because um, they were forced to because of the wars and whatnot. And, of course, uh, in response to that, I would have to ask, uh, which wars caused the forced conversions of Hassan bin Thabit, Abdullah bin Rawaha, Ka'b bin Malik, and Unais al-Ghifari? Uh, and then after David spends the next 15 minutes looking up those names, even though he should have come across them in the past 30 years that he's studied Islam, he'll conveniently ignore this video because he's got no good answer and would rather avoid embarrassing himself. Did he say I'll avoid this video when we sit there literally going through the entire thing? Fareed. Okay. He actually doesn't get it. It's he still fair. doesn't get it. Suppose you name every person who was actually impressed by the Quran. <laughs> list list them all. And I put together another list of people who thought the Quran was a stupid joke and it was terrible and they made fun of it. How do we know who to listen to? That's the point. You, the Dawah guy, will say, go with the go with these guys. They said that was amazing and eloquent. Okay. Why go with those guys and not these guys who thought it was a joke? Why? We don't know. Allah says he doesn't want us to be in this position. Therefore, he gives us a revelation in our own language. Where is it? You're saying it's in Arabic, which is the opposite of what your God says. And so your enti- everything you're saying, Fareed, every single thing you're saying contradicts what Allah says. And you yeah. still don't get it. That's the point. You could... I don't know. David, 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 may, may, may I may I interfere here? Maybe maybe just to provide a different uh, to just uh, say it in different words one more time. Maybe he will understand it uh, <laughs> uh, after this. So uh, for for it, uh, li- listen, listen here. Uh, <laughs> listen, listen. Quit pronouncing every single letter. Listen, Farid. I, so, I would, I would actually understand AP. I would understand people who, you know, English is second, third, fourth language for them, and so on. I would understand pronouncing every single little letter. But in Turkish, every single letter I see in Turkish makes a completely different sound from what everyone thinks it makes. So you're the last people on earth to criticize that's, English. But go ahead. That's not true. That's not true. Uh, <laughs> listen, Farid. Um, David might believe in completely uh, different things, might have completely different standards for what he believes is correct and what is not correct. I might believe in, I don't know, um, flying unicorns that are pink and green in color that uh, that bring me that bring people soup at night and that steal your belongings in the in the early morning. And I might believe that because I heard it from somebody who lived two million years ago uh which i got confirmed by somebody's cousin or whatever you know completely strange standards right i can still sit down here and look at the quran and make the argument that david is making because what david has made the argument that david is making is not i can't trust this 
I can't trust the source. What David is making is the Quran says it specifically sends a book to certain people in their own language so that they don't say we were not given a book in our own language. Uh, so how shall we understand you know these messages to the, that were given to these other people so where is a book in our language so allah explains therefore he sent a book in arabic to them to the arabic speakers so that they can never make that excuse and now the case is closed he will now ask the arabic speakers when they are dead did I not send a book to you in your language? And the Arabic speakers will say, yes, you did. So that will be case closed, problem solved, right? Except, and here is the problem that David points out. If you now argue that the Quran is not just a book for the Arabs, but for everybody in the world, including for David Wood in America, who does not speak Arabic, then how did Allah actually solve the problem? He didn't, because now David Wood can say, hey, I don't speak Arabic. It didn't come to me. I missed it. Where's my message? Where, where's the message in my language? Now you could say, oh, David Wood is expecting too much. Okay, it doesn't matter. What matters is that this is Allah's standard and Allah's standard failed by Allah's standards. I hope this is clear. I hope this is understandable. If you don't understand this, I hope somebody else can explain this to you. If not, please just quit and delete your channel. Thank you. All right, that wraps it up. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, finish out Fareed's point here. Further. This is the end. And to the rest of you guys, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oh, that's the end. Uh, oh, wait, no. He... Okay. I remember there's a clip. I remember seeing myself at the end and of this. And even the argument from literary excellence, Muhammad won very few followers winning uh, using this argument. That's you a fact. say, well, how did Muhammad get so many followers? That's when his argument changed to... Hey, join me, uh -huh. and we'll go. Sp hey, that's split exactly up what I just said. Of war, um, we, we'll, Why is he we'll this? seize property, and we'll we'll take women uh, captives as our sex slaves. And if you die, you get virgins in paradise. That's when Muhammad's message started spreading. Correct. Very rapidly. Well, double confirmation because I just said that. Thank you. That's for it. You. Wait a minute. He just played that clip, and that he that's played it. that. He randomly played that clip at the end of me. Farid. She for, oh my for, God. Fareed, do you not know that Muhammad preached in Mecca for about 12 years at first, uh, you know, privately to uh, people he knew and then publicly and did not get a did not get a ton of followers using that method? Interesting. Mm -hmm. And that only started getting lots of followers later on when the message kind of changed. Interesting. All right, we'll take, uh, take some super chats and then we're out of here. Again, by the way, for anyone who is a channel member, there is a video waiting after we are done here. Check it out. I think you can go to the community tab and I think you can see it there. Uh, what are the scrolls of Abraham and the Sabian book supposed to be? What's the cope for Allah's books? Not only getting corrupted, but straight up disappearing. Uh, yes, th notice the, the Quran mentions uh, scriptures given to... Lots of people. It names the Torah and the Gospel and the Zabur, but it also talks about uh, revelations given to other people and so on. And we're supposed to be aware of these, but yeah, that is an ongoing question. Uh, the issue is also uh, when it comes to the Zabur, uh, people often nowadays are, um, assume that the Quran, when it, when it says Zabur, is talking about the Psalms uh, because it says um, that Allah, you know, gave it or revealed it to 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 david the wood uh or because because that is implied but um but that doesn't really make sense because the the psalms are not like a a revelation to david not even remotely <laughs> um but yeah, nobody there... knows what it refers to and that and that is just the best possible explanation that people came up with yeah, it's just this ongoing problem of uh, the Allah and Muhammad having very little clue of what they're talking about. And uh, they just seem to have, a, like, it seems to be limited to 
a general understanding of these people say they have this work and hearing an occasional quotation of something in it. And that's the limit of Allah's knowledge, where it seems like Allah should know a little bit more about these texts that he supposedly revealed. Uh, Gufus here says, I did several Hajj seasons as a charter flight crew. Always happy pilgrims, but the toilets end up like a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprising. Uh, Farid looks like a like a bearded Zoolander from the Zoolander 2 film. Nice. That's interesting. Specifically Zoolander 2, not 1. That's interesting. I haven't seen Zoolander 2. Mr. Crange is here. AP, did you ever visit the cube in the desert? Uh, no, I didn't have the chance. You see, no. this is why you left Islam. If you had followed Allah's <laughs> guidance, you would have yeah. still be a Muslim. Yeah. Uh, I just did a discussion on Reasoned Answers channel about how the Quran is not maximally beautiful per aesthetic philosophy. Everyone can check that out on Reasoned Answers. Uh, if male martyrs get 72 virgins in heaven, what is the heavenly reward for female martyrs? They stand in corners. Yeah, they get to watch. Yes, you get to stand in, in a corner competing for your husband's attention with a bunch of specially designed uh, perfect sex slaves. Alhamdulillah. And you See, get to stand the there waiting for yeah, you get to stand there waiting for your husband to pick you. Pick me, pick me. David's impressions. David's impressions are getting good. David's impressions are getting good. Ali Dawa's impression is spot on. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. It is uh, Allah sent Joseph Smith for the English speakers. Yeah, someone, uh, <laughs> uh, Julian yeah. Gentry said he's going to make a video. He said he's going to make a video. Uh, Mormonism is Islam for white people. <laughs> it is. It it's a is. funny. It's a funny title. I, th I think that I think that video will do well. Uh, Ronald says, uh, "Idi Amin Dada is the is the messenger Allah sent to Uganda. He married young girls and was last conqueror of the British Empire." Yeah, you can. That, you can, that you guy can. was really messed up. Hey, Far Four said, "You see, David says he hate going to church." Yeah. <laughs> talking about when i was a kid yeah uh door says you uh you should do a bingo board for dawa correction videos with stuff like you see guys missing the point and i don't have time for you but i'll make this video anyways keep up the good work yeah man, uh, man. dawa are like cats they need repetition for being wrong all the time yeah <laughs> i feel like i'm talking to a cat sometimes uh, no disrespect, but you are an idiot, you stupid man. AP two for eight. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> <What> is that? <laughs> that is messed up. No disrespect, <laughs> but you're stupid. What's wrong with you? <laughs> well, I don't mean to to to, to disrespect him. So. Uh, have you seen the Babylon? Uh, have you seen the Babylon Bee of Kamala Harris toddler speech written? Also, I want to make Quran only fans, but like having my head attached. You see? No, I haven't seen. I haven't seen the Babylon Bee uh, sort of transcript of that. Uh, my spidey senses are tingling. Santa's sleigh bells are ringing. Muhammad balls are dingling. Kaibar inhabitants are screaming. Merry Spider Mass. Nice. Al nice. Spider Mass. The name is Al Spider Mass Leather Strapus of Antioch. We saw that. We saw that name yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. The holy hand grenade of Antioch. Don't you think the demise of Farfour will rally Muslims and end apostasy? Yeah, I mean that should. I mean it would. It united all the young, all the young Palestinians, and that was years ago. So you, you got when those young people grew up, they all sought to avenge the death of Farfour. Yeah, on October seventh. Uh, sorry, autocorrect. I meant scene writer. Also want to make a custom shirt that reads, all right, rest in peace, Theo Van Gogh. Also what Islamic sources say to kill critics. I will add that to the shirt. Uh, there's a passage. There's a passage in Ibn Asak after the conquest of Mecca where Muhammad gave a list of people to kill. And it was uh, several people on the list were there just for criticizing Muhammad. And so Muhammad himself ordered his followers to kill people who criticized him. I have to correct you. It's just the pronunciation is Theo van Gogh. You, you do it. Try it. That's like saying I have to pronounce stuff moronically 
Uh, <laughs> that's like those news reporters who whenever who they, they speak like this, but whenever they pronounce a Spanish name, they'll go Alejandro. And I said, it's like, dude, shut up. Just say, just say that. <laughs> just, just say the normal version. You sound like an idiot when you start yeah, getting an that's accent. True. That's um, true. Oops. Let's see. Islam is not a religion. It's an ideology. <laughs> It's an ideology of a religion. It's an ideology, the ideology of a retarded culture. I don't know if that's an actual quote. That is exactly something your builders would say. But uh, yeah, we've said before that. <laughs> oh boy, that might be a direct quote. I've seen him say things like that repeatedly. Uh, for call in stream, use a three minute. Oh, yeah. So if we wanted to have a call in stream saying, uh, for call in stream, use a three minute delay and have a standby screen ready. Till you deal with the issue, that is what Thaddeus does. It's just a sad state of affairs that he has to put his show on a on a three minute delay to stop all the uh, Muslim viewers from posting gay porn whenever he gives them the opportunity to defend their prophet. Which uh, is what they are familiar with. They always have it handy. So yeah. Uh, T Wood. Uh, regarding yesterday solipsism, the best and worst songs not made by myself, but by Godhead, which created, runs a simulation. I'm the player, everyone else, NPCs, miracles are cheat codes by the Godhead, Jesus God enters. I'm the player, everyone else, NPCs, miracles are cheat codes by the Godhead, Jesus God enters. Um, Let's do it. Yeah. What? You don't know what you're talking about, AP. Uh, 99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 bottles of beer. Explain it again for he's still confused. 99 bottles of 98 bottles of beer on the wall. <laughs> do you even know that song? No. It's, it used to be a song that you'd sing in cars and stuff. 99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 bottles of beer. Take one down, pass it around. 98 bottles of beer on the wall. And you just keep kids uh, entertained by that. But well, this one's 98 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 bottles of beer. Explain it again. Fareed's still confused. 98 bottles of beer on the wall. Uh, seek the cross. You heard mm, Matis Yahoo's new song, Fireproof. Jesus is Lord. No, I've not. Five I, I, just, I just looked it up. It is an actual quote from uh, Garrett Wilders where he said oh, yeah. uh, that it is a it is a retarded. It is an Islam is not a religion. Yeah. It's an ideology. The ideology of a retarded. Culture. I told you it sounds exactly like something he would say. <laughs> the five D's of Dawah: deceive, deny, distract, distrust, destroy. To do the real five Ds, you got to have the same first and last one. You got to say the five Ds of Dawa: deceive, deny, distract, distrust, and deceive. Hmm. Nice. You know what that's from? It's no. the, the five Ds of dodgeball. You got to dodge, dip, duck, dive, and dodge. D. Wood, foundational philosophy book recommendations. Uh, I'd start with Plato's Apology. I'd read a couple more works by Plato. Get to the Republic. Nicomachean Ethics by Aristotle. Hume's Dialogues Concerning Natural Religion. Descartes' Meditations on First Philosophy. And apart from that, get some sort of overview, like history of philosophy, then read that. Or just read the Quran. It's a perfect philosophy book. AP be like, Fareed, I admire your intellectual disability. No offense. <laughs> Daniel Hakikachu's search history, Hakikachu search history, Western academia are the new Dawagandis. What does that stand for? SOC 119. What's that mean? Sociology 119. Western academia are the new Dawagandists. Uh, Alex says, he who fights with leather straps should be careful, lest he thereby become a leather strap. And if you gaze long into an anus, the anus will also gaze into you. That's that quote by Nietzsche. It's uh, he, should, he who fights with monsters. He who fights with monsters should be careful, lest he thereby uh, become a monster. And if you gaze long enough into the abyss, the abyss may gaze into you. It's a, it's a very nice quote. I love the quote. So it's, it's funny to see it in this yeah. short. <laughs> David, you must be new to this whole Islam thing. 
<laughs> new sub here become Numa. Uh, plot twist: Farid is a closet Christian. He's purpose he's purposefully missing your point just to play your videos on his channel and help bring down Islam. God bless you, Farid. Yet yeah, again, we pointed out if you did have someone who's trying to destroy Islam from within, they would behave in exactly the way a lot of the Dawah guys behave. In other words, if I could program someone to destroy Islam from within, it would be exactly like a, a Muhammad Hijab or a Daniel Hakikachu. Yeah, I, I would say uh, I would not necessarily include Farid into that group. I, I have my reservations there because um, of Farid, due to the, you know, the, the, the intellectual level of his content, I think is uh, actually... Uh, nicely appeals to the general Muslim audience, so he would probably prevent them from leaving. You know. The Quran we have now is in Arabic, but the uh, original Quran was revealed in. This is obviously one of AP's fans here. Was revealed in something else, not Arabic. Bus hit. It says bus hit. Wait, wait, wait. Yes bus hit. Uh, did you or anyone that you know have spiritual experiences while in Islam that were hard to explain naturally? How does Islam view such things? That's for you. Uh, hard to explain. Depends on how you define hard to explain. Um, I, I could have said, I could argue or I could have argued back then that I did have uh, things that were very hard to explain. Um, such as suddenly having, uh, I don't know, answers to things that I didn't even even know about beforehand or even didn't ever look up and I just, and, and I come up with it and I look into it later and, I, and, I, and it's, it turns out I'm completely right about it. Mm -hmm. um, or having um, certain signs given to me in dreams or having um, one instance I, I talked about in the past, which is when, when my aunt died that day, I just had, during the whole day, I had severe eye twitching and a headache so much that I had to go home from school and rest, which I'd never do, and take a nap and then wake up and uh, realize that. And I thought there, there, is, there is something going on here, but uh, I don't know, don't think so. Mm -hmm. Um, Dave, they will always accuse you. Don't speak Arabic. Yeah, they will. And the problem is, uh, there are people who do speak Arabic and still think the Quran is garbage. So what do you do? Uh, from oh, the super chat, great expectations. Fact, there can be only one true solipsist. That is true. What about the other people who are solipsists? They're all a figment of your imagination. Uh, good night. They're all the matrix. Good night. Hope y'all rest your leather strap well. No, I'll be up all night, so no. Uh, let's see. Aisha, I feel the pain cutting off my aorta from the lamb when I ate. It should have. The chef, uh, she looked glad when I said it tastes bad from that meat I ate at the Kaiba. <laughs> this was a poem. I didn't realize. Aisha, I feel the pain cutting off my aorta from the lamb when I ate. It should have. The chef, she looked glad when I said this tastes bad from the meat that I ate. At the Kaiba. Hey, hey this, this brings to, this brings a good idea to mind, which is actually um, Farid keeps saying. Farid keeps bringing up the challenge of producing something better than the Quran. So um, I'll say, if, if he takes that seriously, then I would recommend um, comparing the Quran to uh, to lose yourself by Eminem. Mm -hmm. I personally agree that it is uh, significantly better. Um, in terms of you know the the the, the literary aspect, the wordplay, and all of it, so I, I personally would recommend looking into that. In fact, uh, I even asked ChatGPT which one is more complex and more advanced, and ChatGPT told me, "Lose yourself by Eminem is more advanced and more complex." Nice. So, um, and I even have a screenshot of that. I can share you. I can even share the history of that with you. Uh, so. I, I would ask Farid to make a video response to that and to show us which one yeah. is actually better. Yeah. And I mean, notice you could get, I mean, you can get to some of his like 
more technical stuff. You know, like some lemma dumalo that some lemma dumalo you assume I'm a human. What I got to do to get a thirty I'm superhuman? Is where it gets real fast and stuff. Yeah, yeah like yeah. like like how's the Quran better than that? Explain it for read. Yeah. Well, because uh, this uh, Orientalist in French, he did not say that about the uh, about the uh, lose yourself or rap God, and therefore. <laughs> Uh, great expectation, Sid. From Darwinian point of view, wouldn't the more aggressive religion be adapt more adapted to survival? I wouldn't say the more aggressive because you can keep getting more and more aggressive until you just annihilate itself, annihilate yourself through violence. But here is here is an actual concern: an ideology that's been around for a long, long time has to have some features that made it get where it is today. That that's true of anything, whether it's Christianity or Islam or Hinduism or whatever. If it's lasted a really long time, there are some there are some features that it has that made it last a very long time, and that should be an actual concern to people who are going up against something. Right? Like if you're an atheist, don't know who I'm talking about here, but if you're an atheist and you go, oh, we just get rid of this and we'll just do this. You need to have some idea of how that is going to stand against that that's been around for a really long time. Whatever it is, whatever it is, even if you regard it as completely evil, it's got something that made it last and appeal to lots of people. And oh, how are you? How are you going to come up against that? I think that's something that when we talk about Ayan Hirsi Ali and so on, uh, who you know people who who uh, became atheists and then starting to think actually we can't go up against that because you know sort of popular level atheism is a is a fairly is a pretty new thing. And so the question is can you actually stand against something like Islam that's been around for a long long time? It's got certain features that make it somehow well adapted to succeeding in the world as far as keeping converts, spreading and so on. Can you match that with what you've got? You can to you can to some extent. You can to some extent because we've seen Lots of people leaving Islam and becoming atheists and so on. But uh, so, will it work long term? No, because it's dumb. <laughs> uh, Joshua here says, uh, D. Wood, no, I will not eat a whole Quran. Feed it to an animal or something. AP, I will eat it. After my ends, after all, my ancestors are animals. Atheist. <laughs> also, Christian way to take dominion over animals as commanded. <laughs> Nice. Uh, let's see from oh, no comment there. Fair point. Fair point. Marta, uh, Muhammad. Wait. Well, oh, Marta M. Have you ever encountered Newman Ali Khan? Uh, not personally, but I've seen his videos. He was a guy who got in that. It was in that sexting scandal. Scandal. So he's one of the top dais in the world, and then he was at sexting scandal where he's always having these chicks uh, send him pictures and stuff. Oh. Hey, wait, up uh, irregulator here says, I didn't mean bus hit. I meant something else. <laughs> oh, balls, balls hit. <laughs> yeah, 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 we know. It's balls hit. Yeah. yeah, we know. We we gathered that. <laughs> Cedric so it, said, it, was, it wasn't bus hit, it was balls hit. I see. Yeah. Cedric said, uh, thank you both for covering another insane year in Dawa. Will we get a top 10 of Dawa vid this year? And if so, how many spots for Slippery Mojo? That might be a good... AP, this is December. We might meet. We might need like the. Uh, that could be a live stream or just a video, like the top ten <laughs> worst of Dawa for the year. You know, Muhammad Ajab. Hey, what about the dildos? The dildos, <laughs> right? <laughs> this one is more stuff. slippery. This one is more <laughs> slippery than the lubricants he sells on his daughter's sex shop. Oh, but I mean, think of all the stuff we got this year. We got Daniel Hakikachu with yes, if uh, if she's three years old. Uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, but what if you don't have parental consent? We, yeah, there are all sorts of things we could put in sort of a top 10 worst of Dawa this year. Yeah. Uh, D. Wood. Solid. D. Wood, your Fareed sounds like a French Howard Cassell. <laughs> I'm just trying to, that's just what Fareed sounds like to me. And, oh, hey, we have, e wait a minute. Eli <laughs> Game. <laughs> I'm not uh -huh. an atheist. I'm not an atheist, Eli. What is uh -huh. this? You're tr hey, we got Eli who always gives AP 199.99 and says it's because uh -huh. he's an atheist that he won't give an even 200. And then Eli comes over to me 
It sounds like you're calling uh, me an. It sounds like you're calling me an atheist, Eli. Uh-huh. I want it to be clear, everyone. I am not an atheist. That's what you say, but that's not what we see here on the screen. Oh. Proof. <laughs> tomorrow's videos and here is proof that david wood is actually an atheist he has a friend <laughs> named eli who only gives atheists 199.99 and he gave it even though he knows david wood gave him a super chat for an atheist yeah. you see this is the proof yeah <laughs> oh and then far four foot uh <laughs> no extra penny yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah. all right guys uh thanks everyone for watching um it's cool we actually got to go through that entire video that i posted making sure it's as clear as possible for anyone who are watching this and looking for the direct response to farid we also went through farid's entire video i don't know if we should go through his other video uh maybe some of you can watch it and let us know there by the way there's a link to farid i I'm nice. I put a link to Fareed's uh, channel and his video in the description box. Uh, so you can check out Fareed's channel and check out, see if his other response is actually better. If it is, and if you want us to go, if you want us to actually go through that, we'd be happy to uh, to do that. Other than that, we've got plenty of stuff to respond to. Uh, but yeah, let us know if Fareed's responses actually get better. All right, everyone. Oh, yeah. Well, also, um, I, I want to point out, so... Uh... I also, as as we as we figured out yesterday, I have I have Farid in my uh, featured channels list, and I will I still have him there. And I will keep him there because Powerful. I don't mean any disrespect. It's just you know, it's not his fault. Yeah, featured channels. Yeah, Mohammed Ajab, Ali Dawa, all these guys. These are all. No, I, no, I, I only have, I only have Farid, no Mohammed. Yeah. Well, Fareed, we just have to say, and it's cool because Fareed makes lots of video responses to you and to me. And so that's uh, why we're, we're happy to interact with Fareed a bit. But Fareed, we have to say, you missed the point. Do a better job next time in responding to our arguments because until you actually come up with a good response, we're just going to have to say, um, we're just going to have to say, Follow no child molester, sex offender, private pretender. Ain't gonna follow no child molester. Islam's not for me. Islam's not for me. Islam's not for me. <laughs> New video up tomorrow. See ya.